right toward his camera. Stand by, video tapes, and roll tape. The tape is rolling in less than five, in three, two, one. Take tape. From the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, on a beautiful, cool night, this is the scene at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California. Nearly 55,000 fans jamming the Coliseum. And tonight, it's the New York Jets versus the Oakland Raiders. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football is brought to you by Right Guard Natural Scent Antiperspirant, the great wetness fighter with the light, clean scent made from natural ingredients. Right Guard Natural Scent. And by Ford and your Ford dealers. See all the better ideas for 73 at your Ford dealers. Yes, the scene is set in the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum, and we're at that time of the year where the standings speak for themselves. Look at them. The New York Jets at 7 and 5. If they could beat Oakland tonight and Cleveland, their opponents this coming Sunday, the Jets would be the AFC wildcard team in the forthcoming playoff. But look at Cleveland. If Cleveland can beat their opponent, the Jets, on Sunday, and if Cleveland and Pittsburgh should lose to San Diego, Cleveland would win the Central Division, and Pittsburgh would be the wildcard entrant. And Oakland doesn't want to play Miami in the playoffs in their first game, so they want the Jets eliminated. That's their motivation tonight. Hello again, everyone. I'm Howard Cosell. Welcome to our final Monday night of NFL football for the year 1972. The stakes are high, especially for the Jets, and we hope for an exciting encounter. But frankly, the Jets' hopes ride on Joe Willie Namath because of injured back. And Namath has a strep throat if he goes out, or at least a very bad and scratchy throat and chills. If he goes out, Bob Davis, number 15 from the University of Virginia, will be his replacement. Right now, to fill you in in detail on the Jets, with his 176 rabbit skins, the incomparable Dan DeRue. Thanks a lot, Howard. You're getting kind of jazzy, too. I like that black turtleneck. California must do it to him. Talking about the Jets, it's been a kind of confusing year for them. The pass seems to be the thing that's caused the most trouble. They lead the league in passing. They also lead the league in passing against them. That means they're number one throwing and number 13 keeping other folks from throwing. They have had a lot of injuries, as Howard mentioned, on defense in particular. They haven't really been too good back there. They've had some. Steve Tennant's been hurt. Holloway's been hurt. John Elliott's been hurt. He's been back. You can go right on down the list. So it's been a thing of injuries. People have come from all over to see this ball game, though, because Joe Willie has a way of attracting a crowd like that. In fact, Jeff and Hazel, Meredith from Mount Vernon, Texas, are here. And I just thought y'all might like to know that. It's Jeff's first plane trip, and he's having a lot of fun. Going to see a good ball game. We'll get into more, de more details as the game comes along. Jet Forty, let me tell you, his mother's here also. But right now, Frank Everett's going to tell us about those Oakland Raiders, because they've already won them a place in that playoff berth. They look pretty good, too, don't they, Frank? Yes, they do, Don, and that, those rabbits almost made the season. <laughs> The Oakland Raiders can play this game relaxed, if you can call it that. They'd like to win it, as Howard mentioned. Uh, maybe Miami might be tougher than the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Pittsburgh Steelers have come on. They are dynamite. But if the Oakland Raiders can eliminate the New York Jets from the competition, they will not have to face the Miami Dolphins, the undefeated Dolphins. The Oakland Raiders have a very well-balanced football team. They're rated fourth in the AFC in defense. They're rated third in offense. And probably the reason they're doing so well on offense is Daryl LaMonica. In the past, Daryl LaMonica has had interceptions. A year ago, he finished the season with 16, and thus far this year, it's a new Daryl LaMonica. He's not going up on top with the bomb all the time, and he's thrown for only eight interceptions. They have two great receivers, and of course, Fred Boletnikoff leads the American Football Conference with 48 receptions, and then they have Raymond Chester, and he is something special. You're going to enjoy watching him tonight. Two great tight ends tonight. The Jets, of course, have their own Rich Caster. On defense, one of the finest secondaries you're going to find anywhere, and it is a very balanced football team, these Oakland Raiders. The thing to watch for tonight, I would think, would be those two tight ends from either team. And we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum right after this message. Once and for all, which big screen color TV really has the best picture? The answer, Zenith Super Chroma Color. 
Opinion Research Corporation lined up the six leading color TVs with all identification hidden and asked more than 2,000 people from all over America to vote for the best picture. Zenith was the winner by more than two to one over the next best brand. Zenith Super Chroma Color. See the difference for yourself at your Zenith dealer. The solid 73 Ford Torino. Can it ride over this course of two by four smoothly enough to keep a tightrope walker balanced on top? High wire specialist Bill Couch is about to find out on a tightrope rigged to Torino's body. He's counting on Torino's suspension to soak up the bumps and keep him safely on that wire. Bill signals, and they're off. Those wheels are taking quite a pounding, but Bill isn't, as Torino's remarkable suspension does its job. The 1973 Ford Torino, the solid midsize that gives you confidence on the road. Incredibly smooth riding. Stable, strong, and quiet. Because it's a Ford. The new 1973 Ford Torino at your Ford dealers now. Ford Torino, the solid midsize. Back at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California, we're expecting quite a football game because when the Jets and the Raiders have met, historically, it has been something else. People recall the 1967 meeting when Ben Davidson tried to realign the profile of Joe Namath. And then, of course, the 68 meeting. Well, as a little girl named Heidi interrupted that one, 65 seconds left to go. It looked like the Jets had it locked up. And the Oakland Raiders, in 65 seconds, came back and scored two touchdowns to win it. And there is Joe Willie coming out. He obviously will be starting. This is a, well, how more important could it be for the Jets? They have to win. They have to win tonight. They have to beat Cleveland to assure themselves of a wild card berth. And they can do it. And you saw the Jets were received to your left. But again, there has been some historic clashes in this game. In this series, there is no love lost between the two. And whether or not Anything was at stake. These two teams would really get with it. Excitement here in Oakland. Of course, they clinched their division last week against San Diego. Next week, they'll wind up their season against the Chicago Bears, waiting, of course, to have the determination of who they will meet in the playoffs. George Blanda, 23 years of competition. And this man is really a package. He still does the conversion from the field goal, kicking for the Oakland Raiders. And joining us tonight for our national anthem, well, he's an awfully good golfer, too. Singing and recording star, Glenn Campbell. Our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proud Camel and last week, Lou Rawls, two great performing artists. 
This telecast is presented by authority of the Oakland Raiders Football Club. It's intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Oakland Raiders Football Club and the National Football League is prohibited. And we're about to get underway. The Oakland Raiders will be kicking off as their special unit comes onto the field. Jerry DePoister is number four. He handles the kickoff. Dropping deep, Chris Ferrisopoulos on the left. And on the right is Hank Bajorklin, number 40. Ferrisopoulos, number 19. you'll hear a lot of excitement tonight. Fans are relaxed. The Raiders have clinched the AFC's Western Division. They would like to win this one tonight because they would like to play in sunny Miami. And this will go to the rookie from Princeton, the Darkland. to the 25 comes Hank Bajorklin. A 26-yard return. The starting lineup for the New York Jets. And we're taking just a moment to make sure it indeed will be Joe Namath. And yes, it will. Number 12. He's the quarterback. We told you he was suffering from a scratch throat as we look at an injured Oakland Raider. That's Jeff Queen from Oregon State. Jeff Queen down on the 25-yard line. Waiting in the offensive huddle. There you see the veteran, number 13, Don Maynard, who could quite possibly set a new NFL record tonight. He needs seven receptions to break the record held by Raymond Barry. Number 13, the tight end is Big Rich Caster, of whom we spoke a few moments ago. Number 88, 6'5", 228 out of Jackson State. And Eddie Bell, little Eddie Bell, will start at the other wide receiving spot. In the, well, the injury rack running back department, the Jets have activated Emerson Boozer tonight, number 32. He is opening, along with Steve Harkey, number 36. Harkey, a second-year man out of Georgia Tech. John Riggins, of course, had surgery last week, minor surgery to his knee, but he's unable to go tonight. It's a good offensive line. It's a good offensive team. They're fifth in rushing, they're first in passing, they're second in the AFC. And now Jeff Queen comes off. That offensive line for the Jets, John Schmidt is the veteran center. Dave Herman, 67, the right guard. Randy Rasmussen, 66, he's on the left guard position. Bob Swea, 76, and Winston Hill, 75 with the tackles. And now we're ready to get underway. First and 10, Joe Willie Namath, the quarterback. Moving from the 25. Name it to the right, down to the left. Going out, pass intended for Don Maynard and Namaya Wilson was there. Namaya Wilson at the left cornerback, 48. George Atkinson at the tight safety, 43. Jack Tatum is the free safety, number 31. Willie Brown, 24, the right cornerback. They make up a fine secondary. Dan Connors in the middle, 55. Phil Villapiano on the left side, 41. And Gerald Irons, 86, the right linebacker. Second down and 10 from the 25. Just underway from Oakland, California. Maynard right, Eddie Bell out left. Namath, little protection, goes out to Caster and he took his eyes off it. Oh boy. Well, the first one was almost picked off for a touchdown by Namaya Wilson and this one saw Caster returning to a game he once enjoyed known as dropsies. Look at that split screen replay. All alone, yardage to be picked up right through the hand. Nobody near him, no crowd around. Nobody could say was listening for the footsteps. Let's take a look at the roly-poly veteran coach, Weeb Eubank, the only man to win it all in both leagues. And what he's watching is Joe Namath on a third and 10 call from the 25. Both wide receivers, Bell and Maynard, go out to the right. The tight end, Caster, with a lot of speed, is on the left side. Namath looking for Boozer. He has Boozer, and Boozer will be short of the first down, hit very hard by little Nehemiah Wilson. Boozer was just activated this week, Frank, and he had 
played some good football for those Jets. He came up about a foot short that time. They're going to, it appears early that they're going to give him the short stuff because Castor is about in that same area. And it also appears that Namath is going to throw and throw and throw and throw with Riggins and McLean injured and Booza perhaps rusty from two weeks of inactivity because of a hyperextension of his knee. All right, this is O'Neill. He'll do the punting. And he'll be kicking deep to a single safety man with a short man in front. Branch is the up-close man. Oh, and just getting it off. Short kick. Not a big bounce for the Jets on a very, well, we won't call it very soggy, but it is a slow field. All right, the Oakland Raiders, the champions of the Western Division of the AFC, will take over possession. And they move with their number one quarterback in the AFC, Daryl LaMonica, their setback, Marv Hubbard. He's approaching 1,000 yards. He has 941. Clarence, or rather Charlie Smith now, at number 23, is the other setback. Hubbard, 44, Smith, 23, and this is Daryl LaMonica. First and 10 from the 28. Hubbard. Over the 35 to the 37 goes Marv Hubbard. As we look at the youngest head coach in all the NFL, John Madden at 36 years. Gain of nine for Hubbard. Raymond Chester is the tight end. 87, Balitnikov, the leading receiver in the AFC, AFC. Number 25 is the flanker. Mike Sieni, the rookie from Villanova, is the other split in. Second down. And two, the ball at the 37-yard line. Hubbard again. And Hubbard gets the first down, moving across the 40 to the 42. Fine blocking offensive line. Jim Otto's the veteran center. He wears double O, and that means original, the only original. And George Beeler, right guard, 64. Upshaw's the left guard, 63. Art Shell, the left tackle, 78. Big Bob Brown, 76, the right tackle. First and 10 Raiders moving from their own 42. Come Hubbard again. Breaking a tackle and he spins and twists to the 48 yard line. Marv Hubbard. They've really fallen in love with Hubbard out here, Frank. This guy's had some kind of year for these folks. If these early calls by the two teams indicate what we're to expect, we're going to obviously see a lot of running from Oakland. You mentioned LaMonica's improved interception percentage this year, and that has an awful lot to do with it. When he has somebody like Marv Hubbard, you can see his statistics right there to give that ball to. Remarkable year for Darrell LaMonica, only eight interceptions. He now has a second and five, the ball at the 48. And he's working Marv Hubbard. This time, Hubbard is tripped up. National Football League fans, of course, know, Frank, the story of Bob Herbert, a youngster from Colgate who at first didn't make it in the NFL, did some time with the Hartford Charter Oaks, and then came back, and he has made it big, and he is the workhorse, having carried on the first four plays tonight. Discussion going down on the field. Jim Otto. This is an amazing athlete. He's played in 181 consecutive games, double O, Jim Otto. The record is held by Forrest Gregg at 188. Coming into the stadium tonight, Frank, and I saw I recognized this guy standing by the ABC <laughs> trucks. I looked out there, and it was Jim Otto. I said, well, Jim, what are you doing out here? He said, well, as you probably know, sometimes we get caught in that ticket situation. And I'm waiting out here to give some yokel some tickets that I promised him I'd do. <laughs> he was standing outside, looked like one of the fans, waiting to see a football game. All right, third down. You saw how much. So far, Marv Hubbard has been the workhorse. Charlie Smith is the other setback, 23, Hubbard, 44. Hubbard gets the call, and he gets the first down. I'll tell you about that defensive unit of the Jets, and they've had their problems this year. Jerry Philbin, 81 at the left end. John Little, 57, the left tackle. John Elliott, coming off an injury, played one play last week. He's number 80, the right tackle. And number 86, Billy Jackson. He's a rookie out of New Mexico State. He's starting at right end. The secondary, early Thomas, 45 at the one corner. Steve Tannen, troubled with injuries all year at the other corner. And right now, the Oakland Raiders have a first and 10. They're moving from the Jets 46. Firing for Belitnikov and just out of reach. Well, this will be interesting, Don. I remember a game Thanksgiving Day a couple of years ago when LaMonica took the Raiders to a quick 14 to nothing lead over the Lions and then started throwing the big bomb. Frank alluded to his earlier propensity for throwing the big bomb and risking interceptions, throwing deep against the zone. 
And he also did that in the playoff game against Baltimore. The ground game was working beautifully. Then with Hewitt Dixon, number 35 to the left side, and he switched to the pass, and the team lost its momentum. Now he's just switched to the pass after crunching out two first downs on the ground. Let's look. Second down and 10. The Jets have four linebackers. Eversole is in. The draw play. Marv Hubbard. Good hole. Elliott recovers, makes the stop at the 40, and the ball is fumbled, but recovered by Oakland. Just over the 40-yard line, a gain of six for Hubbard. 32 yards now for Hubbard. That was Art Shell that jumped in there and covered that ball, Frank, because Hubbard really didn't get it. He fumbled, and there were some jets around there, and Art Shell jumped in there, number 78, and picked that one up. That could have been costly. All right, it'll be third down now, a long three. You'll find out now the respect. Daryl LaMonica has for the Jets defense. The ball just inside the 40. He puts Balitnikov out to the right. Siani, 49 to the left. They get bump and run from coverage, as you see, the top of the screen. Going for Balitnikov, and dangerous in that kind of coverage. Balitnikov working against Tanner. Tannen, and Tannen was there. Frank, we'll see Balitnikov, Balitnikov is pretty well covered. That's Tannen there, number 21, that's right with him. Also number... 51, Ralph Baker is out in that area. He had a couple of guys that could have been open down the middle. It's pretty hard to see up here, but Charlie Smith came out of the backfield, as did Raymond Chester from his tight end position. But anyway, incomplete, they'll try a field goal. From the 46, the 23-year veteran George Blanda holds all the scoring records, gets it off. Rocky Turner is watching it go through. The Raiders move out in front three to nothing. And this is the man, he's 45 years old. We'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum right after this message. Hello, I'm Cricket, the new disposable butane lighter by Gillette. Oh, I mean, it's good for thousands of lights, so I last for months. Cricket by Gillette. Try me. Harry, make sure you get a close shave and don't cut yourself. You gotta look good for the wedding. <laughs> Don't worry, this is a track too. Two blades, but recessed, so they're safe. Then how are you gonna shave close? When the first blade shaves a whisker, it lifts it out from the face. And before it all snaps back, the second blade can shave it again, closer. Don't ask if I can shave twice with my one blade razor. Couldn't you just shave twice with your one blade razor? The whisker snaps back too fast. Harry, look at your daughter. Gorgeous. <laughs> Gorgeous. The track two. Gillette made it one blade better. Captain's old Chamberlain hovering overhead in the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia. And it's a cool night, but a beautiful night here in Oakland, California. 41 degrees, no wind to speak of. And the aging one who makes all senior citizens happy, George Bland, has just hit on a 46-yard field goal, matching his previous best of the year. And now we look at the poister who has taken the burden of kickoffs away from Blanda, getting set to kick to Bjorklund, who has now moved to the left, Ferrisopoulos to the right. They're trying to get the ball, of course, to Ferrisopoulos. Good run back, man. Well, they won't run this one back. It was high and it was long. And the rookie from Princeton, Bjorklund, very wisely, Kneels in the end zone. Nine minutes and 39 seconds into the first quarter, remaining in the first quarter. And the Jets on their second offensive series. First time around, three quick passes, two incomplete, one drop by Castor, one complete to Booza, short of a first down by a yard, over to Oakland, and you know the rest. From the 20s, Joe Namath passing just under 50%. With 18 touchdowns, nearly 2,500 yards, but also 19 interceptions, that's high in football. And the 36 gets the call, that's Harkey. Second-year man out of Georgia Tech, he's stopped there by Art Toms. Art Toms, number 80, Otis Distrunk, 60, Tony Klein, 84, Horace Jones, make up the front four of the Oakland Raiders. We told you the linebackers and everyone on this Oakland Raider football team has made an interception this year with the exception of Horace Jones. Maybe tonight's his night. Second down and 10. Out to the right comes Maynard. Out to the left is Bell. Namath again, getting both backs out of the backfield. And fires out. 
complete. Out to the left side, Willie Brown covering there as Emerson Boozer rolled out to the left flat. Gain of about two or three. Well, he's going to have to use the short stuff tonight, as Don mentioned earlier. Yesterday in New York City, the Sunday Times sports section had a picture, a chart of what they call Oakland's double zone coverage. It's needlessly complex in its presentation. It's very simple in its execution. We'll discuss it later. Third down and seven from the 22. Bell goes out to the left. Picks up Brown. And Bell... Gets the completion, and he moves out to the 41-yard line, covered there by Willie Brown, but little Eddie Bell is a man you have to really respect for his speed. Not tall, 5'10", 160 pounds. Here he works against Willie Brown. Frank, let's just watch. There's also a heck of a throw. You see Bell trying to straighten, Willie, trying to straighten Brown up. And Brown did slip a little bit just on that turn. But the ball was thrown very well. Eddie Bell, as you mentioned, is a good receiver. Obviously, his handicap is his size, but he does... Does what he can with it. Do what you can with what you got. Amos on a first and ten. The ball just short of his own 42, but Bell left. Maynard, the all-time leading yardage receiver, out to the right. Looking for Maynard. And he has it. Absolutely perfectly oh, thrown again. That is throwing the football. Pretty to see. Incidentally, on the earlier pass to Willie Brown, you don't see them often throwing it to Willie Brown's area. But it was his own there in then, and you can't say it was Willie Brown's area alone. However, Brown is one of the most respected cornerbacks in football, has been for a long number of years. Number 24 from Grambling College. And that was like Super Bowl year, that pass, Frank, to Maynard. All the way down to the 37, and one thought, if the Oakland Raiders do not pressure Joe Namath, he's going to do that all night. Probably the best arm in football. First and 10. The Jets trailing three to nothing. George Landa hitting from 46 yards out. The very first time they had the football. Here comes Boozer as the flag goes down, and Boozer goes down. Number 86, Daryl Irons is there. The middle linebacker, Dan Connors, 55, is there. I think the offside call will be against the Oakland Raiders, I think. But that was only the second running play that the Jets have even tried this evening. Namath once threw over 60 passes in a game against the Baltimore Colts a couple of years ago. Frank, you'll recollect that was the game where he suffered that peculiar bone fracture, the bone between the wrist and, and, and the hand, the thumb itself. I believe the navicular bone. That's correct. <laughs> One Offside, again. five yards. And you might suspect that Namath will be passing more than he might ordinarily pass. His best running back, John Riggins, is not in the game, and we worried countenance of Weeview Bank. He needs to win tonight, and he needs to win against Cleveland next week to get the wild card playoff in the AFC. On first and five, the Raiders threatening the blitz. Now, Gerald Irons, 86, jumps out of it. Amos Good. right on target again, oh. and beautiful in that zone defense, and Maynard is doing a fine job working it behind the Amaya Wilson and ahead of George Atkinson. All right, let's watch him work, but and also watch just as Maynard turns. The ball is already thrown. Jamal Wilson is going back, protecting against the deep. You see the deep zone. You see Bilbiano coming out, number 41. And he turns. That ball is there. I don't care what kind of defense is there. They're not going to stop that one. All right. Namath has taken the Jets all the way down to the 14-yard line. He's throwing sharply. He does not feel well tonight. One of the best games have been performed. The players haven't felt well. And here comes Harkey, and the flag goes down. Frank, that's a good point. Uh, a lot of times, when guys don't feel at their top of their game, they they really do feel a unusual pressure, so to speak, to give their best, and their best is often better than what they could have done had they been healthy. All right, the offside call is again against the Oakland Raiders. A face mask, I'm sorry. Face mask against the Oakland Raiders. I felt they were also offside, but so was both. And, of course, the Jets will gleefully accept the penalty but the point is you're going to see Oakland you've seen Oakland offside twice so far tonight based upon that hitch as the linemen straighten up the offensive linemen in Namath's cadence that's an old trick we view bank never wanted his teams to use it he always felt that that was an illegal cadence to induce the other team to go offside finally he subscribed to that particular kind of count and it's working for him so far tonight First down, the ball at the six-yard line. The Jets moving. 
Jets have thrown seven out of nine plays thus far, so you know what they're planning on doing. This is Harkey, and Harkey is inside the five to the three. Harkey was highly regarded, Frank, in his rookie year a year ago, but he was behind some other players who obviously figured ahead of him, and if he's had a problem, it's holding on to the football. He went in against, uh-huh, you know that, gentlemen, Don Maynard, number 13, the man who can tonight set an all-time NFL passing record. He needs five more. He needed seven coming in. All right, second down and three. Jerome Barkham is in for Maynard. Uh, oh, Joe. Oh. And Joe lost his footing on that turf. He doesn't have the best of knees, as I think every sports fan in America is aware of. Frank, I think they missed the handoff. I think I, they did. I feel it was to be a run, and you mentioned his knees. Let's see it again. It was a quick count. Harkey slipped. That's right. And Harkey was the man who figured in that. That's right. I was down in the dressing room before the game, and I really, you know, I've seen a lot of, a lot of dressing rooms. A lot of guys get taped up, but he has a brace on his left knee that's just incredible. I don't see how the guy walks. All right, you saw Maynard come back in, Don. He'll be flankered out right. His third down. The ball is at the seven-yard line. Bell goes out. Picks up what appears to be individual coverage with Willie Brown. Top of your screen, you did not see it. Maynard, bottom of your screen, he's being covered by Nemaya Wilson. Oh, picked off by Willie Brown, and Joe Namath could not resist that single coverage he saw. He probably... He's upset at, uh, yeah. Brad Bell is who he's upset with. Frank, that was a really, truly... a. a Kind of like this is a Joe Namath night for me, but that ball was well, well thrown again. Eddie Bell, we mentioned his size, was just, watch him now, he has just bumped very hard right here by Brown. And the ball, you can see, had Bell not been hit in there, would have been right on target again. That's obviously what Mr. Brown's trying to do, though. Did not, was not an infraction of the rules at all. It's a very good defensive play. All right, the Raiders will take over. They'll be on their own two-yard line, and we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum where the Raiders lead the Jets 3 to nothing. Your battery is pulled by the headlights, drained by the radio, weakened by the wipers, dragged by the heater and air conditioner, but starting drains more than all the others put together. That's why Goodyear packs the powerhouse battery with more reserve power than the five best-selling batteries. When those other batteries give up and die, Goodyear calls up the reserves. Powerhouse, only from Goodyear. When you've had an especially hard day, it's nice to have a lazy boy at home waiting for you. Just sink down, Joe. Way down, just the way you... Well, hi, honey. Eight's fine. I'll see you there. Well, the Jets took it 76 yards, but there's the turnover at the one-yard line by the veteran Willie Brown. The Raiders now in possession of the football, 648 remaining in the first quarter. All right. Our referee Jim Tunney says, let's get things underway. Monica from the end zone. Firing for Belitnikov. Incomplete. And Fred Belitnikov thought he had it. Covered in there by Phil Wise, who is now in place of Gus Holloman. Daryl Monica thought he had it. And he has fought 48 on the year. Coming into tonight's game through 12 games, of course. Off with six touchdowns. Raymond Chester is has scored seven touchdowns on 29 receptions. All right, will he throw again on second down and 10 from the two? Hubbard 44, missed 23, and here comes Hubbard. Hubbard moving out to the seven yard line. Mark it at the eight. They're getting some charge out of that Oakland defensive line. And you talk about Jim Otto. After all these years, he's still so quick off the mark, it's hard to believe. Of course, Gene Upshaw at 63 should be watched closely tonight. He's one of the best pulling running guards in all of football. Third down and four. Ball at the eight-yard line. Out to the left comes Stiani. Out to the right goes Boletnikov. 
Raymond Chester, the tight end, number 87 on the right side. But Hubbard gets the call. And he's met in the middle, John Ebersole, number 55. Al Atkinson was there. And he is very close to a first down is Marv Hubbard. It is close, but he may have just missed it, Gipper. He is now 41 yards. He needed 59 to go to 1,000 yards tonight, Marv Hubbard. He has picked up 41 of those 59. And just short. That's it. So the punting unit will come on. It'll be Jerry DePoister, who also handles the kickoff duties. He has not been kicking too well this year. A little over 37 yard average. And the Jets have the number one punt returner in Chris Ferrisopoulos dropping deep. Ferrisopoulos will be the deep man, number 19. And just up front is number 29, Rocky Turner and DePoister. Now, checking the turf, we told you it's heavy. Low kick. Turner has it, and he gets back to about the 39-yard line. Dropped there by Greg Slough. 34-yard kick by the Poister. So the Jets take over. Good field position again. And we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum, Oakland, California, right after this message. a new kind of dress shirt, the dress knit. You wear it with a tie, but it's as comfortable as your favorite old sport shirt. The supple knit fabric moves as you move, stretches as you stretch, and even when you get a little roughed up, your shirt keeps on looking pretty terrific. It makes you wonder who they really love, you or your shirt. I like your shirt. The dress knit from Arrow the most comfortable shirt you can wear with a tie. 5.34 remaining in the first quarter. As you see, the Raiders out in front of the Jets. Three to nothing in a game. Well, well, the Jets have to win it. They have to win tonight, and they have to win against Cleveland next week to get that wild card playoff in the AFC. Oakland has an incentive. We'll talk about that in a moment. But right now, Namath takes over. First and 10. They're on the Raiders' 39-yard line. Harkey, 36. And Boozer, 32 of the setbacks. This is Harkey. And Harkey maybe gets a yard, hit there by Art Toms, number 80. And I'll tell you that Emerson Boozer is just coming off an injury, a knee injury. If you're wondering why he is not being run tonight, that could be a reason. Well, they'll have to start to run him because they're going to go nowhere, very frankly, with Steve Harkey. We've got 5'10 left of the first quarter. Namath has passed eight times, completed five for 69 yards. Let's see what his total number of passes is at the end of the first quarter to get a measurement on the game itself, long term. All right, now we go to a four-end offense on second down and nine. The lone setback is Harkey and Jerome Barkham. 83 is in the game, and Namath will go down. Full pressure, and that's the first time they have turned it loose. But Tony Klein, 84, was there. Our Tom, 80, was there. And they really smothered him. Frank, one of the things could be that the, the four-end system that you spoke of it more or less telegraphs the fact that they are going to pass. You can see these guys just really winding up. Here they come in there. Tony Klein, 84. She mentioned Horace Jones, 82. Actually, all of them are about there. Art Toms is there. And all the way back to the midfield mark. That's only the eighth time this year Namath has been sacked. So that offensive line has given very good protection throughout the season. And that was a quick look at the four-end offense. Boozer back in the ball game. Jerome Barkham out. Third down and 21. The ball at midfield. Both backs again coming out of the backfield. Caster. And Rich Caster has it. He may go all the way. And a good block from Maynard. What a block by John Maynard. You're right, Frank. He really poured it on. 
50 yards. Rich Kastner, his hit touchdown of the year. This is the toughest situation in the world. Hit a long pass. Third down and long yardage. Watch it come back. Good shot here on the ground. Watch his good protection again and look at the ball. Right over their heads. And here's Maynard, number 13. Watch him. He sees it. Caster has it. Out of his screen. He throws a good block. Look at Caster go. 50 yards and a touchdown. That dive by Villapiano, but no chance against Caster. 6'5", 228, but he is really fast. Bobby Howfield comes on now. He won the game last week on six field goals from New Orleans. And Howfield drills it through. So John Amos hitting from way out, 50 yards out. The remarkable thing is that he had just been sacked right before that. He came back, called another pass, and both of his backs who could be turned protection out of the backfield and then hit for the score. Here's just another look at that play. Shows the protection that Frank's talking about. Look at all the Raiders around there. About five guys are there. You can see him throw that thing right in the middle. And here's from the ground level. I tell you, our boys are working good down there in that truck. Must be old Joe Setti doing something good. Yeah, <laughs> somebody down there doing Dennis good. Lewin, too. We'll pop all our people tonight. It's the last game of the season. Good shot, anyway. That thing is right in there. I think that was the Setti rather than Lewin, though. I'm going with the Setti. I tell you, these two teams play some games, as Frank mentioned earlier, through all the years. And Namath will come back with that pass a second time, Frank. Those who remember the 27-23, 68 AFL playoff game will remember doing exactly that. The kickoff. And Howfield drills it into the end zone. And that's where it will be killed by Clarence Davis. Cuts back. I remember in that 68 playoff game at Chase Stadium, Joe had a pass picked off in the flat, a quick sideline hitch, Frank, carried in for a touchdown by the uh, Raiders and uh, gave the Raiders a temporary lead. They kicked off. Back came Joe with the very same play to George Tower Jr., who was then with him. There's Joe Willie now, and he is, believe me, feeling badly. He was taking some kind of pills when I was down in the dressing room before the game, and he was hoarse as could be. First and 10 Oakland, they move from their 20. And here comes Tommy Smith, his first carry of the night. And he runs into number 81, Jerry Philbin. Interesting about Philbin, he unloaded on his coach, Wee Eubank, along about the time of the Washington game earlier in the season, the game won by the Redskins 35-17 at New York. Complained that he had been mistreated and his bargaining by Eubank and was being underpaid. Said openly he wanted to be traded preferably to Washington. Ever since, he's shut up, settled down, and he's playing something like the old Melbourne. He's playing effect effectively. It's second down 11. Charlie Smith lost the yard. Now both the wide receivers, Belitnikov and Sandy, moved out to the right. Good tight end on the left side, Chester. A two of the Monica one. Now he switches off, and he gets it to Belitnikov, who has the first down. Al Atkinson, 62, back to make the stop. You can't give anyone that much time, Dandy. No, Not anyone. You're exactly right. Kind of a rolling pocket. You see Daryl standing there in good shape. Now watch Belitnikov up at the top of your screen, or the left of your screen. Didn't really have to make many moves because he was really open right there anyway. And there's the middle linebacker, Al Atkinson. It does make the tackle. That's enough for a first down. Atkinson. Atkinson's a, oh, there's Joe Willie again. Atkinson's a first-rate player having a fine year. Ben Brockman, for instance, the Atlanta coach, says he's as good as anyone at the drop back and defending against the pass. First and 10, Oakland, out to the 32, their own 32. Again, the two tight wide receivers to the right. Monica again with lots of time to throw. And firing for Siani. Did he hold on to it? No. Incomplete. Appears to be a little shaken up on that play. He's grabbed his knee. This guy's really done a heck of a job for him out here this year, too. He sure has, a rookie from Villanova. And he's he doesn't have a lot of speed. Everyone in the league knows it, yet somehow he's always open. He seems to me, as you watch him on the replay here, to be a somewhat stronger George Sauer Jr., who never had great speed when he was playing with the Jets, but was always loose and a sure-handed receiver. All right, now from the 32-yard line, it'll be second down and 10. Cliff Branch, 21, has replaced Siani. Branch also a rookie, and here comes Hubbard. He's over the 35 to the 37. Met there by Larry Grantham and John Ebersole. Ebersole is one of those many coming from Penn State and the leadership of Joe Paterno. 
Ebersold's been with them several years now, a little slow in developing, but is still well regarded and is still a tough, strong kid. And Hubbard is now 13 yards away from 1,000 for the season. It's third down and five. LaMonica will either draw or pass. Both his wide receivers go right. Now he sends both backs out of the backfield, and still he has time, but this time, fumble. Larry Grantham forces the fumble. Well, that's, uh, he missed the big break right there because uh, it appeared they had it. Uh, the Jets had it. He sure the did. Official is pointing the other way. And that was John Elliott who forced the fumble. John Elliott also has been injured. He only played one play last week against New Orleans, but again, the Jets did not come up with the football, and on comes DePoister to do the punting for Oakland. Before John Elliott had knee surgery a year ago, he and Tom Keating of the Raiders, when Tom was younger, were regarded as the quickest defensive tackles in the old American Football League, each equally outstanding. All right, you saw a brief look at Parasopoulos. Over 11 yards, average on a return, and he leads the AFC in that department. This time, a soft bounce, and it'll roll dead at the 22. 46-yard punt. You know, next Monday night on ABC, it's the Liberty Bowl featuring the Cyclones of Iowa State, coached by Johnny Majors, against the rambling wrecks of Georgia Tech by Bill Folker. Don't miss this exciting ball game next Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and of course, it's right here on ABC. All right, let's watch the play selection of Namath now for a particular reason, which will develop in the course of this sequence. First and 10 from the 22. Bell goes left, Maynard goes right. Harkey 36, Boozer 32, the setbacks. And top of your screen, you saw Bell jump offside. And you wonder why a flanker would ever be offside on a running play. You sure do. Boozer. Booza had gone for about five. Only thing you can say, you got to know he sure does feel silly out there. <laughs> right out there. Wait a minute, guys. Oh, no. Right out there in front of everybody. That's right. I'm interested in Namath's play selection because recently in New York, he's been accused of suddenly turning conservative. Remember, he's thrown nine times thus far in the first quarter, has completed six, won a 50-yard touchdown play to Richard Castor. And Namath is anything in his own mind but conservative. Let's see if he retreats to a steady running diet. All right, first down and 15. Ball at the 18. Danny, we've been told, of the local Raiders, has just a slight injury as we look at Harkey. Harkey going off the left side, dropped by Tony Klein. 24 seconds, clock moving in the first quarter. The Jets out in front, 7-3 to three in a game that they must win or they can forget about everything until next year. The thing to remember about the Oakland Raiders is they're one of the best second-half teams in football, maybe the best in the fourth quarter. This is a strong team, deep in its 40-man roster, and they love Monday nights. We've had them three times before over the three-year span, and every time they've won and scored 34 points in the game. That's the end of the quarter, Gipper. And we'll be back at the Coliseum in Oakland right after this message. You parents ought to know something. Football's not just for us fathers anymore. That's right. Now the whole family's enjoying NFL Action Player Stamps from Sunoco. Great to collect and trade. You get nine stamps free every time you stop at a participating Sunoco station. While you're there, buy a Stamp Saver album. Regular edition, 89 cents. Deluxe, 249. Get NFL Action Player Stamps free at Sunoco. Us kids love them. I'm Raymond Lord, number five and one of the coldest parts of the country, Hamden, Maine. My car has to start, so I use dry Sunoco gasoline. I never had any problem. Always started in 20 below zero, and even lower. I'm staying with Sunoco because it's always treated me right. Fill up with dry Sunoco gasoline. All winter long, your car starts like it's summertime. Dry Sunoco gasoline. I'm Gene Upshaw of the Oakland Raiders. Some of us save all of our lives to ride around in a luxury car like this. But some kids don't have to wait that long. In New York, drugs killed more young people last year than any other single cause. But thousands can still use your help. Before they take that ride, 
Right, volunteer, Washington, D.C., 20013. What we need, money can't buy. We need you. The National Center for Voluntary Action. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service on behalf of the National Football League. Our cameraman, Arch Griffin, from the Goodyear Flint, Columbia, gives you the shot. We're down in the field, it's second down and 10. The Jets moving, they have the ball on their own 22-yard line, 23-yard line. Amos firing for Caster, and it's incomplete. Covered there by number 43, George Atkinson. Atkinson was all over him. That was beautiful defensive. He really was. The ball was thrown a little bit behind Caster. It appeared from here. Let's take a look at it and see. But Atkinson certainly is right there. A sideline move from the tight end of the square out. A little bit behind him. Caster possibly could have caught it, but Atkinson's right there to wrestle it away with it. Namath now 6 of 10, 119 yards, one touchdown. That one touchdown, a 50-yarder to Rich Caster. All right, he'll have to put the ball in the air again. Bell to the left, picked up there by Willie Brown. Out to the right, Maynard. Namath looking for his setback. And complete, but it'll be short of the first down as Caster that's the kind of pass Dandy Don always objects to. On third down, you've got to get the third down distance on the passing trajectory itself, not rely on the receiver to be able to run to make the necessary first down yardage. Right, Dander? That's the way I was taught. And uh, I think there's a lot of credence <laughs> in that teaching. Good, you like that. Number 20, Steve O'Neill. On to do the kicking for the Jets. A couple of dangerous run back artists. This is Cliff Branch and O'Neill. This is put into it. And the fair catch called for by Clarence Davis, number 28. 14-11 remaining in the first half, and the Jets are out in front of the Raiders in a game they must win 7-3. This is the Thiokol Vibration Laboratory in Utah. Here, our giant vibrators give Miniman missile components the shaking of their lives. This week, Ford is using the same vibrators to give the 73 Ford Galaxy 500 over a million bumps and shakes. Ford is out to prove a point. Quiet is the sound of a well-made car. Before the shake test, we took sound readings and got a very quiet 65 decibels. But will this Ford Galaxy 500 be as quiet after a million bumps, shakes, and deep vibrations? Most of them so fast, we had to remove the gas tank and cool the shocks to keep them from overheating. Now, on the same highway, at the same speed and conditions, not one decibel point noisier. In Ford Galaxy 500, quiet is the sound of a well-made car. See it at your Ford dealers now. Back at the Oakland Coliseum, we're in the second quarter, 14-11 remaining in the half, and look at Sistrunk, Otis Sistrunk, and he is steaming. It's a cold night, but he is really warm. Defensive <laughs> tackle for the Raiders. First and 10, the Raiders from their own 37. LaMonica now drawing a crowd, but he's trying deep to Belitnikoff. It'll be picked off. That's Steve Tannen. And he's picking up blockers. He really is that. Mike Ciani after him over there, and Mike got him. Steve Tannen all the way back to the Raiders' 40-yard line, finally dropped by Ciani. He returned that 31 yards. yards. I'm sorry, Giffer. I was just going to say that's Tannen's sixth interception of the year. He's been sidelined much of the time with a pinched nerve in his shoulder. They've had a very hard time with it. He's been a much maligned cornerback. He's been beaten a number of times, especially by Howard Twilley of the Miami Dolphins, but everybody gets beaten by a particular guy a lot. Here's the play again. This one's underthrown about 12, 14 yards. You see Tannen looking for those blockers. He cuts in there, someone slips. Sienny's up the top of your screen, he finally got him. First and 10, and the Jets have a seven to three lead. Here comes Boozer. Emerson Boozer cracking down to just short of the 35-yard line. Gain of about four and a half, stopped there by Otis Sistrunk. 19 years, the head coach, not always of the Jets. Baltimore Colts, the only coach who's won titles in both conferences. He's a master at building a football team, isn't he, Giff? He is that, and he is quite a great man, too. He is a nice man. I like him. 
Neptune here. It's a long time to keep the ulcers away. Second down and five. Boozer again. Harkey with a block out in front, and Boozer is really leveled. Number 84, Tony Klein, and number 41, Phil Villapiano. And Phil Villapiano is not big, but he will cut you in half if you give him half the chance. In his second year out of Bowling Green, we first saw him a year ago against Cleveland, and he's some kind of football player. And Swayus really leveled number 60, Otis Sistrunk. Swayus number 76 of the Jets, and Frank tempers began to flare. Of course, Swayus is a former Raider, was traded to the Jets a couple of years back. It'll be third down now and two. The ball at the 32-yard line. Namath separating his backs. Boozer splitting. Harkins the other back, 36. Big draw, looking for Eddie Bell. And it's picked off, it is. No, no, out of bounds. And he had to come down inbounds with both feet. Did Willie Brown. Let's take a look. He is a beautiful athlete to watch, Willie Brown. Watch him there with Eddie Bell. He's playing his man. He sees the cut, sees Bell, goes up. Now, let's watch him. He catches the ball. He's way up in the air. Now, watch him come down. Both feet have to be in. It looks that left foot is going out, and it did. Good call by that referee. Absolutely a good call. There. And Bobby Howfield comes on. Sometimes we criticize them. I know you do at home, but these officials have to call it right now, not after they go down and check in the locker room. From the 39, Howfield. He's got plenty of leg. He kicked six of them last week, but he misses. And meanwhile, Bob Davis thought he made it. Bob Davis the holder, but it's no good. The Jets lead the Oakland Raiders 7-3, to three, and we'll be back after this message. Gillette makes a better double edge now than the one your father used. The smoothest edge we can put on a blade for the smoothest shave we can put on your face. The Platinum Plus Blade. And someday, Gillette will make even a better blade for your son. The more things change, the more they stay the same. We made the first blade, and we're still the first blade. Gillette. Platinum Plus. Hi, guy. Sid? Sid? What's this, a new kind of right guard antiperspirant? Hi there. <gasps> That's my new right guard natural scent. Natural scent? It's new. Light and fresh. You know, natural. <clears throat> Smell it. Huh? It smells terrific. Mm, it's right guard. <laughs> oh. Helps keep you dry all day. <laughs> new right guard natural scent. <laughs> Does Mona know about you? Oh, they move. Oh. This is my husband, Bruno. Bruno? <laughs> Hi, guy. <laughs> Bobby Howfield has just missed from 39 yards out. The Oakland Raiders take over on the touchback. First and 10, they'll move from the 20. Howfield on the sidelines, 107 points coming into the game. He now has 108. The Jets leading 7 to 3. Both the wide receivers up to the left. And Raymond Chester is now split wide to the right. But Marv Hubbard gets the call up the middle. Stopped there by Larry Grantham. You know, this Saturday on ABC's Wide World of Sports, the Supernatural Drag Racing Championships from Ontario, California, the World Roller Skating Dance Championship from Bremen, West Germany, and an event you've enjoyed before, the International Toboggan Championship from the famous Cresta Run in St. Moritz, Switzerland. That's this Saturday at 5 Eastern and Pacific, 4 Central, and of course, right here on ABC. Gain of four for Hubbard, just short of the 25-yard line, second down and six. Chester again, split to the right. He has the speed of a wide receiver. And he collects it like a wide receiver, and Steve Tannen makes the stop, but it's first down Oakland. You now, never know for sure why a quarterback will come back like that, but Tannen was the one that intercepted it. He says, I'm going to, I don't know, I think a lot of quarterbacks do this. They look, man, I'm going to show you something. That last one slipped. Try to look at this one. He throws Chester out there. This time, Tannen slips a little bit behind Chester. But that ball's well thrown. Chester ran a good route. This is one of the most casual patterns I've ever seen. I don't think he <laughs> thought he was going to get it. But he does, and he makes the first down just short of the 40 of the Oakland Raiders. Here comes Charlie Smith, and he gets a block by Hubbard. Turns the corner and goes up to the 42, dropped by Phil Wise, number 27. 
Also up there was number 21, Steve Tannen. Chester with his size will be a mismatch for in a one-on-one -on -one situation for any of the Jets secondary. He is an utterly superb athlete, 6'4", six, 6'4 four, six, four and a half. Could be a great running back as well as a great tight end. This program is being brought to you as an ABC Sports exclusive. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves on second down and eight. From the 42, LaMonica has Siani left. And he gives off to Hubbard, and Hubbard gets back to the line of scrimmage and gains about two, just short of the 45. Stopped there by Larry Grantham, who was just activated. Grantham, a 13-year veteran. In the early going, Frank, you'll recollect Hubbard and the Oakland offensive line was getting the charge, and they were chewing up yardage on the ground. It was only when Darrell turned to the air that he began to have trouble, including the one interception that the Jets failed to capitalize on. But now the Jets' front four seems to be closing up on that run. It's third and six. We'll have a three-man rush. We have four linebackers. Eversole has come in. The moving pocket. Monica going for Charlie Smith, and he holds on, and I believe he has the first down. Yes, he does. Just over the 50-yard line into Jet territory goes Charlie Smith. That's what we were talking about earlier, Howard. If you're going to catch that thing on third and four or five, make sure it's the first down. He made it by about a, no more than a yard. That was a passing situation, and of course, the Jets had put in John Ebersole in their four-line back structure to defense that. But it didn't work. Now Philbin's back in the lineup. LaMonica now, three of eight, 34 yards. Again, the wide receivers, LaMonica, Luciani, out to the left. Picked up there by Early Thomas and Chris Parasopoulos. And here comes Hubbard, Charlie Smith with the block out in front. And the Hubbard hurdles all the way down to the 43-yard line. Hubbard now 12 carries, 59 yards. That is 1,000 on the season. Does that do it for him right That's there, Brad? 1,000 yards for this man, Marv Hubbard, who one time was released by the Jets. See you at Appleton, Wisconsin, Marv. He's become a premier runner in the National Football League. Who was the other writer that ran over 1,000 yards, Howard? Clem Daniels in 1963. Oh. I'm going to help him, Miss Don. Okay. Second down and four. Got 1,005 now, yeah. or a three. I started to say a while ago, this young man was cut. He went back and worked it out in the minor leagues, came back, and has really become the workhorse of this backfield. And he is very close to the first down. They're not going to give him that ball, looks like. They ought to give him that football. He went right over big Bob Brown. And I enjoy watching Bob Brown work at right tackle, number 76. He's six foot four, weighs 280 pounds. And that was the guy who went right behind that time. Bob Brown, 76. He is a good one. Third down, about a foot. Charlie Smith gets the call. Met there by the right side of the jet line. But I think he got it quite clearly. They'll measure, but... 7.09 remaining. The Jets out in front, 7 to 3. Joe Namath, a 50 yard touchdown pass to Rich Castor. George Blanda hit from 46 yards out on a field goal. On a really super night in California. It's chilly, but a great night for football. First down, Oakland Raiders. John Madden on the sidelines. Three out of his four years has. He's won the Western Division. Now looking ahead to possibly, if he can defeat the Jets tonight, it'll be Pittsburgh or it'll be Cleveland. If they don't, it'll be on to Miami and the undefeated Dolphins. On first and 10, LaMonica. And he's going up in the air to Belitnikoff, and he's open. He got it. That one was thrown right on the money. I guarantee it could not have been better thrown. Had to be right where it was. Belitnikov just took off on a fly pattern. It appears that Tannen is hurt. You'll see Belitnikov come back. He's trying to help him. On split screen, let's watch it again. The Mad Bombers, he called, really unleashed that one. And look at Belitnikov. Right out in front of Tannen. Now look at him. Never, never broke stride. It appears that Tannen is sliding, and he may have, no, I don't, he may have hurt one of his shoulder that we mentioned earlier. He, Don, it appears to be his knee. I think it buckled under him as he went down. 
Perfect execution on the play. And it really so was. This Oakland team, which responds to every opportunity as they did in their comeback victory. There goes Steve off the field limping. The right knee apparently bothering him. They came back, as you know, in the waning moments to beat San Diego 21 to 19. They have a way of doing that kind of thing. And they seize their opportunity when the Jets fail to capitalize on their opportunity after Tannen's interception. Failed even to get a field goal out of it. And here's Blanda with Stabler doing the holding. Automatic. So the Raiders have now moved out in front of the New York Jets, 10 to 7. And we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum right after this message. Sooner or later, you're going to get some white owls. And when you do, oh, 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 we gotcha. Maybe we'll get you with the early American jar with 25 invincibles. Or the decorator duck. Or a white owl gift box with my picture on it. But you know we're going to get you this Christmas. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> This is the Goodyear XG78, the winter tire with the exclusive crosscut tread. Crosscut for starting and stopping traction. Crosscut for cornering and handling traction. Crosscut, diagonal, like this, to give you both kinds of traction in one great winter tire. The Goodyear XG78. Now through Saturday, buy one at the regular price, get the second tire for half price. Darrell Monica has just hit Fred Boletnikoff. Boletnikoff's seventh touchdown of the year from 39 yards out. On the right, waiting to receive for the Jets, number 40, Hank Bajorklin, the rookie from Princeton. On the left, Chris Ferrisopoulos. Two mouthfuls. That was good, though, Frank. You handled both of them really well. Jerry DePoyster, three. 6.50 remaining in the first half from Oakland, California. A swimmer. Chris Parasopoulos. And hurdling over the 25 is Chris Parasopoulos. 23-yard return. Still holds the NCAA record, does Chris Parasopoulos, for combined punt and kickoff returns. All right, the Jets take over. Their game has been the passing arm of Joe Namath. And we told you at the top of the show tonight, he does not feel well. He has a very scratchy throat. But you would never know it the way he's been flipping the football. Again, putting both those backs out of the backfield. Out to Harkey. And Harkey upset by Phil Villapiano. There's Fred Poletnikoff. And he doesn't have hands. He just has glue. He chews chewing gum. You can see that right he there. He sure does. That's verified. He just doesn't drop the football. It's an event when he does. Namath now, 8 of 13, 131 yards, one touchdown, a 50-yarder to Rich Caster. Harkey gets seven yards. It'll be second down and three. Ball just short of the 35-yard line. Again, the back's checking for Red Dog oh, and then pretty. moving out, and it goes to Caster. That's pretty. You know it looked to me that he was trying to hit Bobby Bell on a little sideline pattern out here. We've got Rich Castor on a split screen. You'll see Joe look this way. He can't do it. Turns back. Here comes Castor. And watch this. That's awfully good coverage back there for you, a big guy like that. You have Atkinson, number 43. Picked up another first down. Steve Tannen, strained knee ligament, not expected back tonight. Big loss to the Jets. First down, 48 for the Jets. Clock's moving. We're inside five minutes remaining in the first half. Namath again. This time he holds his backs in and he goes deep. And underthrowing just a little bit as Don Maynard was streaking down the sideline. Covered there by number 48, Namaya Wilson. And there are some big men. Yes, sir. Bob Brown might be the Art best Shell. in the business. When Bob Brown wants to play, he can handle any defensive end in football. That's why Al Davis made the trade. That sent Harry Shue down, among others, to Los Angeles. There he is, right there, number 76, Bob Brown. 
Metro, Art Bob Brown, we mentioned, weighed 280. Art Shell is right in there with him. He weighs about 265. On second and 10 from the Jets' own 48-yard line. Maynard, top of your screen, just moved back. He didn't want to encroach the line of scrimmage. Both backs again out of the backfield. Maynard's open. And Tatum saved the touchdown. Jack Tatum. Maynard all the way down to the 26-yard line of the Raiders. All right, he's working on Nehemiah Wilson, number 48. Don Maynard, as you can see, is not a big receiver, but my goodness, he must do something well because he's about to break all the records. Namath threw this ball right on the line. It was not really much of a loft to it. Had to drill it in there. Maynard just worked his, worked his way free for about a step, step and a half, and the ball's right there where it's supposed to be. Don Maynard, now four receptions away from the incredible record of Raymond Barry. 630 receptions on the career. First down and 10, the Jets. Short of the 25. Harkey. You'll wonder what the Jets might be doing if they had John Riggins in there and if they really had a ground game to supplement that passing game of Namath and set it up more properly. The way Joe's been throwing, he'll probably throw 30 passes or more. At the very least, if they get into trouble in the second half, he'll be throwing even more. John Riggins, of course, was just short of the 1,000-yard mark himself, 56 yards short. Gain of three for Harkey, second down and seven. Ball inside the 25. Namath this time holding both backs in. That usually means he's going to try and go deep, but he checks off to Maynard. And Maynard picked up by Phil Villapiano, and this is a rough cookie. Phil Villapiano at 222 pounds. Some say he shouldn't even be there at that size, but he is something else. We'll see another look of this from the ground level. I think you're right, Frank. I think he was trying to go deep to Castor. Villapiano has Maynard. Now you be careful. Be nice to that little boy from Texas. And then he just bounces him right there on the 20. And Don is just three away from that all-time record Frank's been referring to. And Frank, he started out as a member of the Giants. Certainly did, and he had the speed and everything, perhaps not the finesse that he has now. Of course, one of the greatest receivers of all time. It's third down and two. The ball inside the 20, mark it at the 18, and name it, they'll put it in the air again. And intended for Maynard again. And covering, and covering well, number 48, Namaya Wilson. We've just had an update, fellas, from the Jets' bench. They now say they're going to try and get Tannen ready for the second half, whatever that means. Bobby Howfield, who set a Jet record last week with six field goals against New Orleans. His attempt will come from the 25. It'll tie this football game up, a game that the Raiders would like to win. They would prefer to play anyone, I guess, but Miami and the undefeated Dolphins. And the Jets, well, they have to win it or they can forget it. And the 25. Good. It's all tied up. Bobby Howfield from 25 yards out. NBA basketball returns to ABC for another exciting season in this, the biggest year of professional basketball. The season premiere will feature the Chicago Bulls against the Phoenix Suns two weeks from today on Christmas Day at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Then on Sunday, January the 7th, the powerful Los Angeles Lakers take on the Milwaukee Bucks at 3.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. In all, we're bringing you 29 games this season with seven nighttime playoff games, plus the All-Star Game from Chicago, and that'll be on January 23rd, and it's all on ABC. Bobby Hopfield sets it up. He'll be kicking to number 28, Clarence Davis, and speedster Jimmy Warren, number 20. All tied, 10 apiece, 231 remaining in the first half. And Davis in the end zone, he'll run it out. And Davis up to the 24, where he's dropped by three Jets. 28 yard return. Jerome Barkham, the main man. Clarence Davis, and he's had a hard time this year. He's had a pretty good year. He suffered a broken bone in his shoulder in preseason. But the second-year man out of USC, some football player. 
Steve Tannen has come back into the lineup for the Jets. Didn't even take till the second half. So we got three pieces of information, each one a variant. That's showbiz. Yeah, this is real because there he is, Howard. Steve Tannen, 21. Gus Holloman, 48. Or Phil Wise now in at safety, 27. Kiss Ferrisopoulos, 19. Early Thomas, 45. And right now at the two-minute warning, we'll tell you we'll be back in a moment after this message. About 40 years ago, the first Ford station wagons came on the scene. And people discovered some very original ways of putting them to use. Like absconding with the mascot of your arch rival. Today, another Ford station wagon has come on the scene. The economical little Pinto. Up front, a rugged 2,000cc engine, front disc brakes. In back, fold down the rear seat and you get over 60 cubic feet of cargo space, which can be put to use in some very original ways, like absconding with the mascot of your arch rival. The Pinto Wagon, it's a basic economy car that carries a lot. It's a Ford wagon that costs very little. When you get back to basics, you get back to Ford. Pinto, at your Ford dealers. Art Griffin, our cameraman in the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, giving you your shot, this shot. We have some great cameramen, A.J. Armentani, Steve Nikifor, of course, Duke Dukwich. You got some real names, too, haven't they? They're not only good oh. cameramen, they're fun to play around with. Oh, Drew DeRosa's in there. I won't leave him out. His first down for the Oakland Raiders from the 24. La Monica finds Charlie Smith. Charlie Smith, very close to a first down, out to the 34-yard line. Good receiver, Charlie Smith. He is, was injured most of last year, but he is a steady football player. He's over 600 yards now in rushing, and he also had 21 receptions coming into the game, working here against Bill Wise. Frank, they're just flooding the zone there. When he catches the ball, they want him to get out of bounds. This is exactly what he did. You saw that. See, that was Belenikoff that went on the inside on kind of a turn in. Hey, wait a minute. He was. He hey, saw that time. Hey, hello. He allowed that pass, and one foot landed out of bounds. Well, let's, let me see here. Let's take another look. Is it time to say that maybe we're at the wrong angle? Let me take some. Well, that's the <laughs> roughest thing in the world to call. And there, are lot, there are a lot of people who like to see that rule change to coincide with the collegiate rule. It wouldn't be a bad idea, and the reason they probably don't do it, because a lot of records would go out the window, and that's probably not a good reason, but... That is the reason that people are using. It's a tough thing to call. It really is. Yeah, they're going to miss some of them. There's no question about that. I mean, we've got, a, got that one on camera. Second down, you saw how much. 155 remaining in the half. Charlie Smith on the screen. Cuts it back. He gets the first down, and he gets out over the 40 to the 41. John Elliott. Recovering from defensive tackle, making the move, and now Ebersol comes in to give the Jets four linebackers. Out goes big number 86, Rich Jackson. Clock moving. Three timeouts have the Oakland Raiders, but they're not using one. So obviously they're going to put this ball in the air. Obviously, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> obviously they should have, Frank. They sure cost them a lot of time. This time you'll see the timeout by Daryl LaMonica. Larry Grant, the men on the stop. This is our last Monday night game, as we said at the top of the show, for the year 1972, but it's not the end of football on ABC. For the first time ever, the Sugar Bowl game will be played at 9 o'clock. On New Year's Eve, it'll be some game between Oklahoma, the Big 8 Conference champion, and Penn State. And don't forget to look at number 30, Greg Pruitt, when you watch that Zuna team. He finished second to Johnny Rogers of Nebraska, you'll recollect, in the Heisman Trophy ballot. Chuck Fairbanks had some year coaching those Sooners. They play exciting wishbone tee football. Penn State, well, through all the years, under Joe Paterno, they seem to excel. Yeah, we have got some excitement here, too, Howard. You know, it's hard to think. Here we are in the middle of December, and as we look at Daryl LaMonica talking to John Madden, They've been together for that period of time. And across the field, the New York Jets, they've worked all these months, six months, 
and if they lose tonight, it's over. That's the end of it. Or if and they tie, it's shocking. Even if they tie, it's over for them. A tie will do the Jets no good. They've got to win to stay alive. And they've had a tough schedule in the late going. In fairness, you play Miami on a Sunday, then Detroit four days later on a Thanksgiving day. That kind of thing isn't easy. What a game that Miami game was, in, at least in terms of just being a bruising game. But right now, the Oakland Raiders, and they're tied with the New York Jets at 10 apiece, have a second down and six. The ball just short of the 45. Top of your screen, Siani trying to get the call from Monica. Litnikoff faking the deep pattern. He slips and falls, but he recovers on a great move. And, well, you hate to overdo it, but Fred Belitnikoff is something else. Oh, I'll tell you what's a good move. Fred Belitnikoff comes down. Darryl Monica goes back. Turn in. You see the feet slide out from under him. He had one hand down, keeping his eye right on that ball. You could just see that he followed the ball all the way into his hand. Made a good reception. First down. They called another timeout, Frank. And over to the sideline, and LaMonica, the veteran, is going to make sure that Steve Tannen is indeed healthy. You know, there's a whole evening of specials Friday for the youngsters. The night the animals talk, and Dickens' classic, A Christmas Carol, both in cartoon form. And for the grown-ups, music and comedy on Love is Barbara Eden. And John Lennon and Yoko Ono present the one-to-one -one concert, and that's Friday here on ABC. There is Maynard on your left, and on the right is the man who has delivered so many passes to Don Maynard, Joe Namath. Maynard's a good-looking boy there. I didn't realize he was it. Look at him. Now, don't curve yourself up, Donald. Yeah, he's an old Texas boy. He came up to the Giants, and I'll tell you, he was raw, but he had some of the great moves even then, and a lot of speed. Went over, of course, and played with the Titans. As we look at our situation, as it's tied up at 10 apiece, we keep repeating the importance of this game, particularly to the Jets, because it's all over if they don't win it. All right, first down and 10. Just inside the 40, LaMonica is going to go deep to Chester, and he attracts a lot of... Who is that, Tannen? Yeah, Tannen almost made an unbelievable interception, Frank. He didn't. It appears that he's hurt again. Right in the same place, Don. Yep. That's not a good corner for old Steve tonight, but he was right there with him, and as you pointed out, it's, uh, I guess, one of the vicious sides of the game. They seem to have a tendency to pick on cripples, and he is hurt a little bit, but you see Raymond Chester, he's put a big receiver on him, and I'm pretty sure they know what they're doing. You see, they're trying to get some double coverage back here. Here's Tannen number 21. He's doing his best to get back here. He has a shoulder, Don, that with a bad nerve in it, Howard, and we were talking about it earlier. Every time he gets bumped, right there, he and, almost caught that. Excuse me, Frank. And I think it, this might be his shoulder because I think so. it's a nerve in his shoulder that causes his entire side to go numb. He appears to be pretty, pretty bad off this time, or at least. That goes way about, yeah. and he is deeply distressed by this. Yeah. What Frank told you is exactly true. We were together with Weeb Eubank in the Jets dressing room briefly before the game, and Weeb was explaining what happens and why they haven't been able to suit you that shoulder or anything. Now they're taking him off, and he's really racked up. I think it, I think it might be both. It sure could be, because he's really limping pretty heavy on that knee. Steve is not a big guy. You know, fellas, when I talked about him earlier in the game and described how he had been a maligned cornerback, He's never been a maligned around the National Football League as an athlete. Many teams wanted him when they felt he was in uh, Weeb's doghouse a year ago, and many teams would still want him. Some feel at the free safety position, he'd be as good as anybody. And that's the essential point I wanted to make. The young man's a fine athlete. That he is, and again, he's had six interceptions on the air, picking off one tonight. He'll be replaced by Rich Sowles, Styles, a second-year man out of Alcorn A&M. He's had his own shoulder trouble, as you know, Frank. He's uh, wearing he a has. brace. He had a shoulder separation earlier this year. And you watch LaMonica check him out with 102 remaining in the half. Politnikov moves out to the right in front of Rich Sowles. Sandy on the inside. And right away, and Sowles gets the interception. <laughs> he checked him out. Well, he Sowles, he got out. a pretty good hand. And he came through. <laughs> but that's what he was trying to do. You're absolutely right. And Frank, he just, that was just a bad throw because he had some folks open. He did under make a Sowles. bad throw, Don. Sowles was giving him plenty of room. He was deep. But uh, that ball was right to him. And he says, Red Sowles, you've got nice hands. 52 seconds left in the quarter. Let's take a gander at what Joe Willie does. 
And it's all tied up, 10 apiece. The Jets have three timeouts. The Raiders have one. And the Jets would like to untie this. Namath has been intercepted by a one, once, and LaMonica twice. Bell, seven to the left. Maynard out to the right. Caster, the big tight end. Number 88 is on the right side as Namath again puts both those backs out. Oh, me. Eddie Bell wide open right in the slot between those three men, and you saw a great picture of the zone defense and a great move by Eddie Bell. That's right where you have to pull up. Frank, I know we've said this before, and I guess a lot of other folks have this season, but this is true. They know they're going to throw. You'll see Brown giving him plenty of room. And there's just a hole right there in the middle, and that ball was, was well thrown. Bell ran a good route. They're picking up good yardage. They can't do that all the way up and down the field, but when you're way back, you give them plenty of room because you don't want them to get that quick touchdown on you. What they're trying to do, just get them. Jerry Joe's trying to get as close as he can, maybe get a field goal out of this. And thing. Bell gets the first and 10, just short of the 50, 36 seconds. Bell moving out of bounds, killing the clock. Both backs out of the backfield again, and yeah. Namath with good time. And I'll tell you, he drilled that, and Eddie Bell who only goes 5'10", just could not quite get his fingers on it. Namath couldn't resist. He looked first over to Booza, who was wide open, who might have given him the first down. Now you're saying only Eddie Bell. He couldn't resist. He knew he could hit Eddie. Yeah, that's what hit Rich Castor in the chest. Wasn't that that's badly exactly thrown. exactly right. It was well thrown. Well, and he wanted the big yardage and maybe the touchdown if he could grab it off. Otherwise, he had Emerson. You saw him look to his left briefly during the course of the play where Booza was at the left sideline. It's second down now in 10. Six seconds used. Now 30 seconds remaining in the half. Again, all tied up. The Jets and the Oakland Raiders at 10 apiece. Arkey. And he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And if you wonder why you do that, you have to do it now and then. Otherwise, that defensive front four can just completely disregard the run and come from all angles. Namath uses one of his timeouts. I'm He'll go to the sideline. Jeff, I'm afraid to say this, but we've just had a report from the Jets bench that says this time it looks like Dannon is out for the night. However, we can expect at any time an update based upon... It's the same knee injury, apparently, as earlier. Strained uh, ligament in the right knee. But be prepared for a change at any moment. From the Goodyear Blimp Columbia, and we had a good look at Joe Namath. We were giving that Columbia really a workout tonight. Yeah, a lot of folks don't realize it, but that's 202,000 cubic feet of helium in there. Does it really? How many people? Uh, 22. And look at how Arch Griffin give us that shot. It can go 30 miles per hour. Dandy. Its length is 199 feet. Its height 60 feet. Its width 48 feet. 202,000 cubic feet of healing. Well, that's a good shot of the two uh, relative captains coming in. You saw Namath come back in from conferring with Weeb Eubank on a third down and 10. The ball just at midfield. 26 seconds remaining. And you saw Dan Connors coming back from John Madden. Let's see what the two head coaches put together. Oh. Out to the right goes Maynard, and out to the left is Eddie Bell, and the Jets just playing deep, but they keep their 4-3 alignment. Now, now they're in a three-man front four. Intended for Harkey, and almost picked off by Dan Connors. Dan Connors just about came up with that one. 21 seconds now remaining. And Steve O'Neill will come out. It's just out of range of Howfield. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, but had he hit Emerson Boozer over here on the sideline a while ago, would, he could have easily picked up 10 or 12 yards. They would have been in field goal. That's range. correct. He just couldn't resist going for the big baby. Uh, Left branch is deep. This will be. Well, the attempt at the fair He's catch by anyway. Davis, and wait a minute. The Jets recovered or inside the 25. 13 seconds on the clock, and the Jets have two timeouts. Now, uh, you can probably get a playoff. Lawrence Davis is watching this one. This one goes right through the bread basket. You can see he didn't even close it up on it. Look at the Jets down there. Uh, let's see who's going to get it. They all got it. It appeared to be number 61 to me. Roger Finney. Don, you got 13 seconds remaining. How many plays will you try? I'm going to throw one good one and kick it. Well, Bobby Howfield is out 
on the field now. I think the thinking is we don't want to take any chances, even though they have one timeout. They want to go in at halftime with that 13-point lead, and the Raiders more than likely are going to take away the sidelines, and you may not be able to get timeout called quickly enough if you cannot get your receiver out of bounds. Little Bobby has missed one tonight, connected on one tonight, but last week he was the whole ball of wax. Six field goals out of seven attempts for an 18 to 17 victory over the New Orleans Saints. The final one coming from 42 yards out as time had run out. And this attempt will come from just, just inside the 30, and it would give the Jets a three point lead. It's tied up right now with 13 seconds remaining in the half at 10 apiece. It's good. And unless they run the kickoff back, the Jets are going to go to the locker room 13 to 10 over the Raiders in a game that they just absolutely have to have. A lot of people are probably questioning the motivation of the Oakland Raiders because they've already clinched in the West. Well, that's been the subject of constant write-ups in the papers out here all week. We've, the three of us, have been out here all week. And anybody who knows Al Davis, the managing partner of the Raiders, anybody who knows John Madden, and anybody who knows these Oakland players knows that they want to win tonight, and they want to badly. For whatever reason, they would rather play the winner of the Central Division of the AFC than Miami in the initial playoff game. We've emphasized that before. You know but another thing, they had a bad game and were lucky to pull it out in the opinion of many against San Diego. They want to reestablish the excellence that had been theirs in the earlier going in head-to-head -head contests with Kansas City. And there is the coach, John Madden, 36 years old, and I bet you a lot of Pittsburgh Steelers are watching this. And those are not our editorial comments, by the way. That's right. Inside the 30 and not necessarily the onside kick and you see the tempers flare and this has been the story of this series the Raiders and the Jets but they were just avoiding the run back seven seconds now on the clock and I'll ask the old cowboy quarterback seven seconds Don you're down by three do you keep it on the ground take no risk of the interception or do you strong arm it like Daryl Monica can do so well Give it to Marv Hubbard and go in and regroup at halftime, Frank. <laughs> well, they did call timeout, so that might indicate they're going to try something, something deep, perhaps. Interesting that the clock was wrong a moment ago, Frank. It showed three seconds, which was duly reported. Now it shows seven. This is like a throwback well, the to Raiders the final Olympic. Raiders have the ball, Howard. Yeah, the <laughs> final Olympic basketball game when the Gipper. Couldn't believe what he was saying. Oh, don't do that to me. Three chances. <laughs> uh, we'll see how you got back to the Olympic basketball game from this one, Howard. You got a funny way of Because traveling. they moved the clock back. Oh. <laughs> Three it, times. They would have moved it back forever. <laughs> so they finally got it. Well, the running play. Hubbard. That'll kill it. He fumbled. <laughs> he fumbled that ball. It bounced right back to him. No time now showing on the clock. And there's the gun. And that is the end of the first half. The New York Jets out in front of the Oakland Raiders, 13 to 10. And we'll be back with highlights from yesterday after this. I don't think I could do it, Mr. Jones. You can do it, Maurice. I'm going to teach you how. A man who's doing more than he has to is Frank Jones in Chicago. He's a metropolitan life salesman, but that's not all. In his free time, Frank keeps the education program at his church going. A small part of it Keep going. is roller skating. Let's try it again, Maurice. You'll also find Frank working with the day school, Sunday school, basketball team, and arts and crafts. Frank thinks this extra work is just as important as providing people with the life insurance they need. Watch your balance. <laughs> hey, Maurice, you want to race? Look, Mr. Jones, at skating. Beautiful, Maurice. Frank Jones's attitude is typical of Metropolitan people. That's why you'll like doing business with them. At Metropolitan, we sell life insurance, but our business is life. Tony Randall guest stars with Julie Andrews, Wednesday night.
At halftime in Oakland, the New York Jets are out in front of the Raiders 13 to 10. And we'll be looking at highlights of the NFL games of the weekend in a few moments. But first, here's a progress report on the flight of Apollo 17 from Frank Reynolds at ABC News Space Headquarters. Welcome to Monday Night Moonwalking. You'll be interested to know the astronauts on the moon have just asked of Houston who's winning the football game. Gene Cernan and Jack Schmidt have been out on the surface of the moon for more than three and a half hours now. All is well. The astronauts began their television show from the moon tonight by deploying their country's flag. You are aware of this. But this, this flag has flown in the smoker since Apollo 11. And we very proudly deploy it on the moon to stay for as long as it can in honor of all those people who have worked so hard to put us here and put every other crew here and to make the country, the United States, and mankind something different than it was. The astronauts are more than halfway through their first moon walk. They're still very busy. And here's Jules Bergman with a report on what they're doing right now. Frank, right now we're watching spacecraft commander Gene Cernan up on the moon drilling a deep hole, a series of eight-foot deep holes for both a heat flow experiment to take the moon's temperature and to record neutron particle strikes on the moon's surface. Uh, spacecraft lunar module co-pilot uh, Jack Schmidt, just out of the frame working some 400 feet from the limb, has been planting microphones for the seismic profiling experiment, geophones, for explosive charges that'll be recorded, uh, be exploded, and then recorded three days after they leave. Let's hear what they're doing. Okay. Right across the river. Okay, you're getting ready to take uh, geophone photos or alpha photos. I'm getting ready to enable the old geophone. Okay, I think that, that means you've uh, taken the geophone photos. Certain. Thank you, Jules. It certainly beats a marching band. This is Frank Reynolds at ABC Space Headquarters. Now back to the Oakland Coliseum and the New York Jets Oakland Raiders game and Howard Cosell. Thank you very much, Frank Reynolds, for that up to the minute report on Apollo 17. We are back live at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum after an exciting first half with Joe Namath and the New York Jets surprising the Oakland Raiders up to this point 13 to 10. But we look for a lot of action in the second half. Oakland, one of the top teams in football in second half action. Now to our weekly procedure of showing you halftime highlights from critical encounters over the preceding Sunday, and in this case, Saturday, too. We've jammed in six games for you. We are not showing the Pittsburgh game against Houston, their 9-3 to victory, because time won't permit it. But our congratulations again to the Steelers for their victory. In the meantime, we pick up with the action, Cincinnati against Cleveland. This is Riverfront Stadium, Cincinnati, Ohio, a showdown game coming up between the Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals, both teams hoping to get the wild card playoff berth. It's action in the second quarter, five minutes elapsed, score nothing, nothing, Phipps in the pocket, hitting Frank Pitts, number 25, who is missed by at least three tacklers there, as you see, and Pitts goes downfield for the touchdown. Cleveland assumes a 7 to nothing lead. What an extraordinary year. Pitts has given the Brownies, used to be with Kansas City. What a surprising team the Brownies have been. This is fourth quarter action. Field goal attempt from 27 yards out by Cockroft of the Browns. The score tied at 24-24. It splits the upright. And the Browns lead 27-24. The Bengals aren't through yet. Now they're threatening. Trying to get the game-winning touchdown. Virgil Carter rolling right, looking downfield, throwing. Billy Andrews tips it up in the air. It comes straight down to him. That interception saves the game. Cleveland wins it 27-24. Cincinnati eliminated. But the Browns very much alive for a wild-card berth in the American Football Conference. These are the Dallas Cowboys at Texas Stadium in Irving, Texas, going against their earlier season tormentors, the Washington Redskins. The Cowboys want to clinch a wild card berth today, and they begin early. It's the first quarter, a little more than five minutes elapsed. What a block by Blaine Nine, number 61, as Calvin Hill rolls in for the touchdown. Dallas leads it seven to nothing. Now it's the second play of the second quarter. Dallas has built its lead to 14 to nothing. Walt Garrison on a burst up the middle. 
how quickly he gets off the mark. What a familiar sight this is to NFL fans. It's 25 yards, a touchdown. Dallas, 21 to nothing over the Redskins. We're in the second quarter, just two minutes remaining. It's 21 to three, Dallas. Craig Morton rolling right, ostensibly to pass, but no, he's bootlegging that ball into the end zone. 12 yards, a touchdown. Dallas, 28-3 at half. They go on to win 34 to 24 and clinch a wild card playoff berth in the NFC. That's Dan Devine. They say college coaches can't coach in the pros, huh? Ask Devine, who was at the University of Missouri two years ago. His team going against the Vikes at Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota. That's McArthur Lane. And this is an index to the hitting in the contest. Flipped over was Lane by Jeff Wright. Now, we're early in the first quarter. Three minutes elapsed. That's an end around to Stu Voigt from Dawkinson. One yard and a touchdown. That's what this play netted as the Vikes took a 7 to nothing lead over the pack. And now we're in the third quarter. It's early. Minnesota leading the pack 7-3. to three. This is the action as we pick it up. And back to pass is Francis Dawkins. He throws to his veteran friend Billy Brown who catches it and fumbles. And Fred Carr picks up the ball. He's returning it downfield and will go all the way to the Vikings' 28-yard line, thus giving the pack the field position they've been looking for. Now watch this play. Scott Hunter, of course, number 16. Handing off to the great one from Ohio State, John Brockington, who for the second year in a row will pass the 1,000-yard mark in yards gained on the season. A first down on that play as they busted over Paul Krause. And then Hunter sneaking in for the touchdown that gives Green Bay a 10-7 lead over the Vikes. Oh, how this Green Bay team, young as it is, has come alive this season. Now we've got 3.30 left in the third quarter. Talkington back to pass. He intends it for John Gilliam. But... Willie Buchanan takes the deflection. Number 28, the great rookie cornerback from San Diego State. He returns at 25 yards to the Minnesota 24-yard line. It's just four plays later. And you're looking at McArthur Lane, acquired by trade from St. Louis. A touchdown, 17 to 7. This made it favor of Green Bay. The final score, 23 to 7 Green Bay. They win the black and blue division title in the NFC. dull and commonplace occurrences of day-to-day -day living, one thing stands out as a completely unique experience. Colt 45 Malt Liquor. A Goodyear test track in Luxembourg, Europe. Jackie Stewart, world's champion racing driver, is about to test a new Goodyear radial tire. A custom wide tread radial made in America for American cars. Goodyear has made radial tires for Europeans for 13 years. Now this knowledge has been put to work in building a new radial tire for American driving. The sidewalls flex. The tread stays firm for handling and long mileage. In addition to exceptional long wear, the Goodyear radial gives you a confident feeling of control on slippery roads, on curbs, making sudden stops. The custom wide tread is a radial tire with a polyester cord body and four belts to hold the tread firm on the road. Only Goodyear has the custom wide tread radial made in America for American cars. See your Goodyear man. Big Red Alex Webster, coach of the Giants to the left. Don Shula, coach of the unbeaten Miami Dolphins to the right. And it's... Yankee Stadium, the Dolphins against the Giants, and that was Norm Sneed hitting Don Herman, the wide receiver from Little Waynesburg, in the first quarter, the fourth player of the game, and it's down to the Miami one-yard line as the Giants hope to spring an upset over the unbeaten Dolphins. It set up a one-yard run for a touchdown by Johnson, but quickly Miami struck back with a long march, and that was Mercury Morris, number 22, 
going in for 12 yards and a touchdown. The Giants' extra point had been blocked, so Miami took a 7-6 lead. Now with the score, 10-6 Miami. In the second quarter, you're looking at Jim Kick, number 21, tough to bring down, running off left tackle for a 26-yard gain. With three minutes left in the half, Earl Morrow drops back, throws downfield, 34 yards. You know who that is, Paul Warfield. Touchdown, Miami goes on to a 23-13 win. Well, that's Bush Stadium in St. Louis, and the Cardinals are going against the L.A. Rams. It's 3-0 St. Louis, the second quarter. There's Roman Gabriel throwing deep to Jack Snow, number 84, down in the end zone, all alone, and Snow drops the football. It's been that kind of year for the Los Angeles Rams. That typified their futility this day. We're midway in the second quarter. It's 3 to nothing, St. Louis. And they're back in their own end zone, the Cardinals. Jim Hart throwing downfield for the rookie flanker from Oregon, Bobby Moore. Watch this. Moore escapes that tackle. He's going to go all the way downfield to the one-yard line, a 98-yard gain from scrimmage. Still not a touchdown, but what a play and what a turn in events for both the Cardinals and the Rams. Donnie Anderson went in for a touchdown right after that to make it 10-0 St. Louis. All year long, the Rams have lost to the supposed breathers. We're early in the fourth quarter. It's 17-14 St. Louis, and that's Jim Hart again. Down to the elongated receiver from Richmond, Walker Gillette. 24-14 St. Louis over Los Angeles. A stunning upset, but Los Angeles still alive in the playoff scramble. Dick Nolan, head coach, San Francisco 49ers, worriedly pacing the sidelines at Candlestick Park. We're midway in the fourth quarter. The 49ers, Jimmy Thomas, with the 49ers ahead, 6 to nothing, trying to move to the left. Blocked off, almost tackled, then reversing his field. Still behind the line of scrimmage, but now he finds some daylight. Moves down the sideline, picks up 22 critical yards as the 49ers get field position that they desperately wanted at that moment. It's the very next play, and the handoff is to Vic Washington. Look at Washington sneaking through that whole pile. He finds some daylight, slips away from that tackler, goes all the way down to the Falcons' nine-yard line, an 18-yard gain. It's three plays later. The ball goes to Kenny Willard. He's in for the touchdown, 13 to nothing, San Francisco. They went on to win it 20 to nothing. Presently, they're first by a half game, Western Division NFC. And back live at the Oakland Coliseum, we have a beauty going on right here. The Jets out in front of the Raiders, 13 to 10 at halftime. Right now, we'd like to express our appreciation to Ed Sable, the head man of NFL Films, his very capable assistants, John Hintz, Gene Mason, and all the people of NFL Films for their help once again this year in the highlights that you've just witnessed. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football, the New York Jets versus the Oakland Raiders is being brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealers. See all the better ideas for 73 at your Ford dealers. And by Goodyear, more people ride on Goodyear tires than on any other kind. And we'll be ready for the second half kickoff between the Jets and the Raiders after this word from our local station. Ben Gazzara stars in Pursuit on the Tuesday Movie of the Week on ABC. In the first half, Joe Namath completed his 19th touchdown pass of the year. And it was a thing to behold, a rich caster with a fine block by Don Maynard. Ground level, watch caster. Third year man out of Jackson State with good speed. There's the block by Namath, you just saw it briefly. But this has propelled the Jets to a 13-10 lead over the Raiders. And later, LaMonica to Belitnikoff, and you will never see a more pretty pass than this, Don. Perfectly thrown, Frank, and Belitnikoff we pointed out, really can't catch him. You see, he never broke stride, but it's way out there in front. Stretches out and gets it. That's when Steve Tennant was hurt the last time, and I'm afraid he's going to be out for the rest of the game. As we await the kickoff for the start of the second half, an old friend of Frank Giffords, who helped Giff so much in his career, and whom Giff, in turn, helped so much in his career, just walked into this booth. One of the best quarterbacks in the history of the game, number 14, Yelberton, Abraham Tittle. 
wearing a fur hat and looking 65 years old. Oh, from Marshall, Texas, no less. And there's another great arm. Why eight to allow about that? Joe Namath warming up on the sidelines. On the night, he's 12 of 21, 194 yards, one touchdown. There's Bobby Howfield. He's set to kick off. Davis is on your left. He's number 28. And Jimmy Warren, number 20, on the right. Davis right at the goal line. And out to the 24-yard line goes the third mirror man out of USC, Davis. Dropped there by Hank. The Jorkland 25 yard return. The Raiders now trailing by three will take over as we get set to start things here in the second half. Offensively, of course, it'll be Daryl LaMonica, Charlie Smith, 23, one setback, Marv Hubbard, the other setback, 44, Raymond Chester, the tight end, number 87. The wide receivers are Politnikov, 25, Siani, 49. From the 24, this is Hubbard, who went over 1,000 yards tonight. Rolling out to the 27-yard line. There are the statistics from the first half. You see Oakland trailing the Jets in total yardage. Time of possession, very close. Hubbard picks up three. It'll be second down and seven. The ball at the 28-yard line. You won't believe this, folks, but Steve, Steve Tannen's, Tannen's back, back in. <laughs> Come on now, Steve. Hey, Steve Tannen is there at quarterback. <laughs> Told you there'd be an update. Tough man out of Florida. He's back at the left corner. This on second down. Here comes Charlie Smith. And Charlie Smith rolls out for yardage enough for the first down. Over the 30 to the 31. And here's our Steve Tannen, our third-year man out of Florida. Leads the Jets in interceptions. He went down twice in the first half. As Dennis Lewin says, what Smith pick his way through this hole? <laughs> and let's watch Smith pick his way through this hole. Marv Hubbard, number 44, is blocking out there. And you got the entire offensive line by the Oakland Raiders. That's Gene Upshaw, Jim Otto, and George Beeler. And he picks up the first down. The ball just short of the 31 yard line of the Oakland Raiders. Just underway in the second half. And here comes Hubbard again. And Hubbard pounds out to the 40. Picking up about five. Now they're back to the ground game that they employed at the very opening of the evening's festivities when they marched down, got into field goal position, and took a quick 3 to nothing lead. George Blander kicking a very long one at that point, but Hubbard was chewing up yardage and passed the 1,000-yard mark for the year, as you know, during that first half. 1,009. Second down, call it six, just over the 40. Charlie Smith on the draw, and this time he's dropped. John Little, number 57, Little, Philbin, Elliott, Lomas. That's Joey Jackson, at defensive right end. And at the linebackers, Al Atkinson, number 62, Ralph Baker, 51, Larry Grantham, number 60. And on a passing situation, we will see number 55 come in, John Ebersole. And we have now a third down and five. Just over the 40-yard mark. Chester on the left side, number 87. Big tight end. This will go to Belitnikoff right in the seam of that zone defense. And Belitnikoff picks up the first down, moves into jet territory at the 44. Frank, there's been a lot of discussion. You mentioned the fourth linebacker coming in, but look at the time that LaMonica has to throw back here. And I'm under the opinion that, man, if you give him time to throw, he's going to find somebody open back there. I don't care how many people you've got. They're still working in front of Steve Tennant. And look at Steve, almost got that same knee hurt again. You can see him give to it. It's his right knee. They picked him up pretty good that time. Belitnikov now four receptions, 78 yards. The Raiders moving on the Jets' 44-yard line. Here comes Charlie Smith. And Smith, over the line of scrimmage, gains about two to about the 42. Don mentioned the time LaMonica had on that critical third down pass play to Belitnikov, and one of the Jets' problems all year has been the absence of an adequate pass rush. Quite frankly, they lack size in that defensive line. That's something we discussed when we had the Jets a year ago, fellas, if you'll remember, against the St. Louis Cardinals. John Little, for instance, is smallish. So is Jerry Philbin. They miss big people in that defensive line. Second down now and seven. 
Both backs coming out of the backfield, looking for Bolitnikoff. He has it again, and they're eating that zone alive on the left side. And you know that Bolitnikoff and LaMonica have discussed the injury, as Don mentioned earlier ago, when you were shaken up, as Steve Tanner was. Well, you have to test him and see if he still can get back to it. They're trying to go into the zone. Frank, you saw Tanner number 21, but number 27 is Phil Wise. They roll back in there. Watch him protect that shoulder, Tannen, that we mentioned. See, he just protects the shoulder, and down yeah. he goes. First down, Oakland. Ball inside the 30. First and 10. Here comes Charlie Smith. Bill Wise coming up, getting help from John Little. Wise 27, Little 57, and over there helping out was Mark Lomas. Well, Oakland has got something going. It remains to be seen how much, but remember what we told you in the first half that this is a team 40 men deep. Terribly effective always in the second half and usually particularly so in the final quarter. Al Davis is one of the shrewdest men in football. He knows how to put a team together and he knows how to draft. Second down and seven. Ball resting at the 25 yard line. Charlie Smith finds a big hole. Inside the 20 goes Charlie Smith. Number 45, early Thomas, saved a touchdown. First down, Oakland. Nine minutes, four seconds. Clock moving in the second half. The Jets out in front of the Raiders, 13 to 10. The Jets have got to win, or it's all over. Six months of work down the drain. They have to win tonight. Next week, they have to meet Cleveland. This team has said that they would prefer to play in the warmer climate. And that would, of course, not be Miami. That's the team they would like to avoid. I'm sure they're undefeated. And if they win tonight, they will not have to face Miami. This is Hubbard, and he breaks loose. He's inside the 10 to the 7. Mark it at the 8, Marv Hubbard. Jerry Philbin coming all the way over to make the stop. That offensive line opening big holes now. Jim yeah. Otto in the middle, double O. Beeler, 64, Upshaw, 63, the guards. Art Shell, 78, one tackle. Bob Brown, 76, the right tackle. The two coaches, Matt and first, and this is Eubank. Second down and one. The ball at the eight. Hubbard behind Otto and Beeler. All the way down inside the five. He'll be at the three. Marv Hubbard. If they're just storming through that Jets defensive line as if they're not there. They're off that mark fast. 81 yards now for Hubbard. Uh, you can just see him as was pointed out. That's Marisopoulos, the first guy that picks him up, and he's the safety. That gives you an idea what kind of holes they are opening up there. 63 was Upshaw, and he did a fine job against John Elliott. One first down and goal. Hubbard gets the call again. He'll be very close to the touchdown. Jets in their goal line defense. Number 71 is John Mooring. Lomas is in, number 84. Philbin, 81. As they unpile at the two. Joey Jackson, Frank, who also just came in, number 86. He's down at the bottom of that pile, too. Atkinson, the middle linebacker, is the guy they depend on to hit at, the, hit at that line of scrimmage and push him back. These defensive line are trying to dig in there. Marv Hubbard's coming out. And Pete Spanazak goes in. We told you that Hubbard went over 1,000. The ball placed now at the one. Smith gets the call. Touchdown, Oakland. Oakland regaining the lead. 14 plays. And one pass to Fred Bolitnikoff, the rest of it on the ground. But just one pass. Let's look at Smith now, because Atkinson was arguing that he wasn't over. Now, if any part of that ball was over while he was in the air, and there he lands over so there could be no argument. That time, LaMonica used just that one third down pass to Poletnikov, but stayed with his ground game, and it paid off. George Blanda for the conversion. That is good. The Raiders moving out in front of the New York Jets, 17 to 13, on the toe of the senior citizen of pro football, George Blanda. 
Jaguar XJ6 sedan, a truly well-made luxury car for around $9,000. The new 1973 Ford LTD Brougham, a truly quiet luxury car priced thousands less. Quiet is the sound of a well-made car. The Jaguar's a bit more powerful, of course. Well, you'd expect that for the money. Four-wheel power disc brakes. Cut pile carpeting. The LTD, front power disc brakes. Cut pile carpeting, too. Power steering, automatic transmission. Standard here, too. Power window option. In LTD, too, plus a power mini vent. You can have a reclining seat in the LTD. <laughs> now I'm sure your five-passenger Jaguar is worth its price. Yet LTD offers the same kind of luxury features for thousands less. And it seats six. Ford LTD, where quiet is the sound of a well-made car. See it. Drive it at your Ford dealers now. Story with 6.54 remaining in the third quarter. The Raiders in front of the Jets, 17 to 13. Set to kick off, Jerry DePoster, deep, number 40, is Hank Majorklin, Chris Ferrisopoulos on the right, number 19. Jerry DePoister. Raiders got out in front early tonight. So George Blanta, 46 yards out, he hit. Boyster kicks to Ferrisopoulos. He should be able to run it. And over the 20 to the 23 goes Ferrisopoulos. He's dropped there by Jeff Queen. 24-yard return. We told you the Raiders got off first and then Namath, after a 15-yard penalty on a third and 21, hit Rich Caster for 50 yards to make it 7-3 Jets. Then in the second quarter, Bolitnikoff. Got a pass from LaMonica. That made it 10-7. Howfield kicked a field goal for New York. That made it 10-7. It was 13-10 at halftime. Another Howfield field goal. And LaMonica has just taken the Raiders all the way. They now have the lead 17-13. And it's first and 10. The New York Jets. They're at their own 23. And Harkey goes nowhere. Connors moving in along with Manny Sistrunk. Oh, the Otis sister. Well, Namath is just going to he threw 21 passes in the first half, and he's just going to have to throw and throw and throw because that ground game is gone without Riggins and without McLean. Emerson Boozer is giving it everything he's got, but he's a little rusty. He's been out two weeks. And Oakland did what it wanted to do, and it did it its way in that drive downfield because they took up more than eight minutes in controlling that football, old-time Green Bay football. Harkey just back to the line of scrimmage, second down and 10. Namath circling both backs out, going out to Eddie Bell, and it pops right off his shoulder pads. Again, you don't take your eyes off it until you can read the label. You're right. He was looking to run with the football even as he was catching it. Namath uh, obviously unhappy about that, but a professional. You watch. He won't say a thing. Nope, he'll survive. He it. knows how much it hurts. He did, he's said an awful lot with those eyes right there that he's looking at. You don't Soulful, have... Don. Soulful. Soulful eyes. I'll tell you what he's saying as we look at now at third and ten. He knows that six months looks like it could go down the drain. However, they're only four down. We've told you the Jets have got to win. They have to win next week against Cleveland, and they can be assured of an AFC wild card playoff spot. Third and ten now from the 23. Name of flooding backs right now. The open man is Harkey. He gets the first down, and he gets out to the 40-yard line. The 41. George Atkinson made the stop. All right, take a look. We've got a, a picture of the zone here. You see the guys rolled up over the top of the screen. They're blocking it. Here comes Harkey. At top of your screen there. He's going to flip a little swing pass to it. Now, here's a good picture of the zone. You see the three deep men and the linebackers in the short area there. Namath read the zone very well. Came back to his running back, Harkey. Picked up a first down. That was a big one there. It was, and it was Harkey's best play of the night. Give him full credit for it. Just over the 40, first down, Jets. Again, Namath sending both backs out. This time, Eddie Bell holds on, and up comes number 24, Willie Brown. And does he dump little Eddie Bell, who only goes 160 pounds? Namath checking things out. Then he realized he was in front Just of the Just a quick little pitch. square out, Frank. One of the things I also noticed, you may not see it on this replay, is that he caught the ball, and one of the first guys to come over and congratulate him for catching it. I don't know what he said is Namath. Or was Namath because uh, these guys do play well together. The receivers, the quarterbacks, they got to really understand one another. 
One second and five. The ball just over the 45 for the Jets. Could be name of changing things. Gives it to Harkey. Loser out front trying to block and he attracts a whole bunch of Oakland Raiders. Gerald Irons, 86. Dan Connors, 55. The linebackers put the brakes on Harkey. It's remarkable, really, that the game is 17 to 13. When we showed you those first half statistics, you saw that the Jets netted 11 yards rushing in the first half. So Namath has had no ground game whatsoever to go with his passing game. And still, he's got better than 50% completions, one for a 50-yard touchdown. Third and three. The ball at the 47. Maynard out right, Bell out left. The Raiders up in their bump and run. Delaying Harkey over the middle. And this time, Caster was the intended receiver, I believe. And Namath really was popped. John Spitt was one of the first ones back. He was complaining to that referee. He says, man, he hit the man late. John Spitt, the fine center for the Jets. Okay, coming on is Steve O'Neill. The Jets will have to turn it over to the Raiders, and they came out at halftime, and they were smoking. They took it all the way in, 76 yards. O'Neill kicking deep. Cliff Branch is back deep. This one will bounce. It will take a jet bounce and inside the 10. And is will be marked dead at the nine yard line. 44 yard punt by O'Neill. And well, apparently, I think one of the might Jets have been touched, touched it. Uh, by a jet, and of course that kills the punt. I think that's what it was, right? And you saw the officials time out, and we'll be out back at Oakland State Coliseum right after this. What's behind Panasonic's Quattracolor TV? Four technological advances to help you get the most out of color. One, a modular chassis with sections that snap out and in for quick and easy replacement. Two, 100% solid state. In Panasonic's Quattracolor TV, the only tube is the picture tube. Everything else is reliable transistors and integrated circuits. Three, a black matrix picture tube. Each little color dot is surrounded by black. This makes colors sharper and more vivid. Four, easy controls that make it this easy to unscramble the picture and correct color, tint, brightness, and contrast. To help you remember these four technological advances, Panasonic named it Quattracolor, a name that stands for our latest development in color TV. Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. The last time the Raiders had the football, they moved it 76 yards to move out in front of the Jets, 17 to 13. They take over now. They're at their own 19-yard line. Hubbard is back in, and Hubbard moves out just short of the 25, stopped there by John Elliott. Hubbard, I believe, was taken out by head coach John Madden so he could justifiably receive the plaudits of, well, about 55,000 Oakland Raider fans. He went over 1,000 yards tonight, and he did it the hard way. He's done most of it the hard way. 20 carries tonight, 86 yards, but he's back in there because the Raiders want this football game. The Jets have to have it. Here comes Charlie Smith on the draw. Good block there again by Gene Upshaw, number 63. Ralph Baker made the stop for the Jets. Look at Bob Brown. He's, he's really perspiring. They're giving him a rest on the sideline. I don't think that he was hurt. Let's take a look here at Upshaw, number 63, and watch this block on Atkinson. That opens up a big hole. That's why they're really able to keep that ball on the ground the way they have. Moving in there, that was number 51, Ralph Baker, who'd come in. On first and 10 from the 30. They're crunching out these yards now, right on the ground. They've got the strength to do it. It's not an 11-man game. It's a 40-man game. Every team has its share of injuries. You can't use injuries as an excuse every year. You've got to have 40 players so that you can meet any circumstance. 
That's why the Oakland Raiders, five of the last six years, have been in the playoffs. They're a 40-man deep team. Charlie Smith gets four. It'll be second down and six. The ball at the 34. Siler has come in for Bob Brown, a right tackle for the Raiders as we watch Hubbard come very close to another first down. And this is what has hurt the Jets all year long, as Howard has mentioned, the ball control of the opposition. Namath has had a good year. He's been accused of being conservative. Well, most conservative quarterbacks are conservative now with such a predominance of zone defense. He's also thrown 19 touchdown passes on the year. And he's put more points on the board than any team in the league except for the unbeaten Miami Dolphins. The problem has been getting the ball back. Third down and two. The ball at the 38. And Hubbard, he'll be very close. Clock ticking, 43 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Joe Namath looking on, and you know this man has, goes through a lot of agony just standing around. He has some very bad knees. He doesn't complain about it. Now he's a nice fella. I got a niece in Dallas, Mindy, who just thinks he's the cutest thing that ever lived, too. There's a lot of nieces and so forth around the country that think that. John, John Madden on the sidelines wanted a, a ruling on that, Don. He wanted a measurement, and he didn't get one. Wonder why not. Referee Tunney ruling that the ball was short. That brings on Jerry DePoister on fourth down. He'll be kicking to the AFC's leading punt returner, Chris Ferrisopoulos. There's Chris. Flag goes down. Forty yard punt by DePoister. you're going to see everyone gathering around here. Well, they're still discussing this. Now it'll be marked off. Great Jim Tunney. Ball has been placed back to the 12. Fair catch, infraction, unsportsmanlike contact. It'll be first and 10 for the Jets back at the 12. And we'll be back after this. This is a $20 pipe. And this is a $6.95 Dr. Grabo pipe. They're both made from the same fine imported briarwood. But while it might take weeks to break in this $20 pipe, you can enjoy your Dr. Grabo pipe right away because all Dr. Grabo pipes are mechanically pre-smoked. A $20 pipe, a $6.95 Dr. Grabo pipe. You decide. Dr. Grabo pre-smoked pipes, the perfect Christmas gift. What does major appliance customer care service everywhere mean? It means GE factory service centers in over 100 big towns. And 5,000 independents like me, in smaller towns means you can call for an appointment instead of hanging around all day. And when I get there, nine times out of ten, I got the part to fix it. So the next time you're thinking about buying a new appliance, remember who takes care of your old ones. America's number one major appliance value, General Electric. So the Jets now will have about a 90, well, I'll call it an 88-yard march. Aki Turner called for a fair catch in front of Chris Ferrisopoulos a moment ago, and then he made contact, and you cannot do that. Unsportsmanlike conduct. Joe Namath will try and take over, and he'll have to move at 88 yards. The Jets now trailing the Raiders 17 to 13. Namath, who's been using his backs out of the backfield all night, over the middle it goes to his big tight end, Rich, Prest Rich Caster. We're Jack Tatum up for the stop. I'm sorry, Giff. We're counting down for the end of the quarter with eight seconds left and still descending. But sooner or later, when you've got no running game and have to pass and pass, the interception occurs. Let's watch as the third quarter ends. 
Caster now four of 81 and that is the end of the third quarter with the score. The Raiders 17 the Jets 13 and we'll return after this word from our local stations. Watch the newest laugh riot of the season temperatures rising tomorrow. I'm John Schmidt of the New York Jets. To a kid on heroin, this is a murder weapon. We've lost too many kids to drugs and crime and neglect, but there are thousands that we can still help. If you want to help, write to Volunteer, Washington, D.C., 20013. But we need money can't buy. We need you. The National Center for Voluntary Action. The preceding announcement was brought to you as a public service on behalf of the National Football League. Joe Namath, statistics, 15-26, 227, one touchdown. But the Jets only had the football seven plays in the third quarter. And they trailed 17-13 in a game that they must win. They're still in it. Both back circling out. Little Eddie Bell comes up with it. And he's out over the 30 to the 31. Time of possession now is starting to change dramatically. The Raiders with 26-43, the Jets 18-17. Again, the Jets with only seven plays in the third quarter. And look at the yards rushing. Next to nothing, 13 yards rushing. This game so important to these Jets. Of course, Reagan sideline, McLean sideline with injuries. Boozer and Harkey going all the way at setbacks. Second down and two. Here comes Harkey. Gets a good block from Boozer. <laughs> Trips and goes down right at the line of scrimmage. He wasn't hit too hard by anybody that time. Well, he got the first. Another good game, and we've had some good ones as we look at Jerry Philbin. And I'd like to thank our commissioner of professional football, Bob Cochran, his assistant in the NFL office. They're a lot of fun to play with, too. Bob Cameron, I thought it was. No, it's Cochran. Bob Cochran. Ended his bachelor days not long ago. Yeah, he married him a lovely from Hawaii. On first and ten. Here comes Boozer. And he's out to about the 33-yard line. Solid football player. Has been for a lot of years. Excellent blocker. Excellent receiver. Excellent runner. Can do everything. Hobbled on and off by injuries this year, and as I said, probably a little rusty tonight, but without the blocking help that would normally be afforded him in the running capacity because of the absence of John Rickens. One defensive change for the Raiders. Carlton Oates is in now, number 85. It'll be second down and five. The ball at the 39. Bell goes out to the left. Maynard is out to the right. Looking for Maynard complete. And Gerald Irons saved what could have been a much longer game. But his first down, the Jets moving. They're all down to the 40 of the Raiders. Frank, I don't know how many times you can say it, but that one is just thrown in there perfectly. Maynard comes down the field, just slightly looks to the inside. He threw it right back up to the linebackers. Now, watch the, the zone. You see these linebackers coming out to this side. They rolled to the other side. The zone was actually deep to the other side. So he threw to the weak side of the zone, right between the two linebackers, coming out of the middle. That was Rich Castor throwing that block down there. Maynard now one away from tying the all-time NFL receiving record of Raymond Berry. He's caught five on the night. Looking for Maynard. Complete. That's it. That's Inside right. the 25 to the 22. What a night that veteran is having. In his 14th year out of Texas Western. All right. Team just come up to the outside. Looks to be the zones on this side. This time, that's Tatum, number 31, getting over a little bit late. He catches it and goes out of bounds. Here's the zone. You see Nehemiah Wilson roll up over here. This is There's not up. an easy move he makes either, Don. He nope. turns completely around. He really does. All right, the Jets moving. They trail 17 to 13. They are on the 21-yard line now of the Raiders. The Raiders, who came out smoking in the second half have eased up somewhat as Namath is still picking away. This is Boozer and he just oh. can't run. They're not running at all tonight. 
nothing. But you have to try it every now and then just to keep that defensive pass rush on us. We've got uh, 12.44 left to go in the football game. It's Oakland 17, the Jets 13, as you know. It's been a good football game. Surprisingly good in view of the fact that Namath has had to pass and pass and pass and pass. And now here he is trying to strike again to overtake the current four-point Rado lead. It's easy when you're from New York to be accused of being partial of this young man. Nothing of the sort. He is a pro. It'll be second down and 11. Namath, 18 of 29, 275 yards, and that one touchdown, the end around to the tight end, Rich Caster. There's a flag, flag is down. down right in the middle, and don't speculate, but that generally holding. involves holding. There it is. You can see the Jets complaining, but it happens to this team again and again and again. They must have called it against John Schmidt, number 52. They and Namath, who, as we told you, was not feeling well before the game. He's a fiery quarterback. That's the break that Oakland needed. Referee Jim Tunney indicates the holding. The ball now moves all the way back to the 37-yard line. That might be the break the Jets need. You know what, Howard? They Fire them get, up? Well, no, they get down there. They might start thinking about running. Out here, he's going to have to think about passing, and that's where they got to get it. Well, the last time they got a 15-yard penalty, in their very next play, Namath hit Rich Caster for a 50-yard touchdown. That was way back in the second quarter. All right, Bell is left. Namath out, or rather Maynard out to the right. Harkey 36, Boozer 32, the setbacks. Comes Harkey. And Harkey getting back to the 35. Dropped there by Gerald Irons, number 86. Good night for Don Maynard, as we told you, he has tied the all-time receiving record held by Raymond Berry of 631 receptions. Raymond Berry, Paris, Texas, playing out of Southern Methodist University. <laughs> what a classic he is. Really a nice man. Damon now with a big problem, third and 24. He puts Maynard out to the right. He'll have to go deep. Caster, the tight end, a logical receiver on a deep pass over the middle, the bottom of your screen. We're going for Maynard. And he had his man beat. He had Nemiah Wilson beat. And Namath put it far to the right. Frank, he did have him beat. I, I really don't know what the route called. Let's watch Maynard run this thing. He appears to be going to go deep. Nehemiah Wilson had him to the outside. He started to go inside. Joe threw it to the outside. I have a feeling that's where the pass was really intended. All right, Bobby Howfield is on now on fourth down to attempt a kick from the 42-yard line. He's kicked two tonight. 125 and 130. He kicked six last week. And he's kicked another one tonight. Three tonight. So the lead is short to the Raiders. 17, the New York Jets in a must game for them. The 17-16, and we'll be back after this. Save your money at a savings and loan. Your money does more than just loan. A savings and loan lends out money for homes, and that helps communities grow. We're doing a lot for America, and we want to do more. This is a 1973 gas tank. It's not much different from the old ones, but the car it comes in is different. So this year, most of the owner's manuals are recommending a 91 octane gasoline, like Gulftane Low Lead. It's the type they recommend, and the price is right too. Gulftane costs even less than Gulf Regular. So if you have a new tank, fill it up with Gulftane Low Lead, the low cost gasoline for new cars. From the Goodyear Blimp, Columbia, you're looking at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California. I guess you could call it the house that Al Davis built. And the Jets have shortened the lead of the Raiders, 17-16. Field goal. Howfield is third of the night from 42 yards out. 
How Bill now set to kick off originally discovered by the Kansas City Chiefs and went to Denver and now he's set to kick to number 20 Warren on your right Clarence Davis on your left 28. And this will be Clarence Davis from his own end zone. And now you see the fired up Jets and you see what usually happens between the Raiders and the Jets. Tempers and an occasional elbow flying around. Watch number 29, Turner. Rocky Turner's going to get knocked down here. He's going to get up and make the tackle. That was Banazak, I believe, number 40 there. And then he comes on here. They've got some help in there. Those Jets are fired up. Clock moving. 11-5 remaining. 11 minutes, 5 seconds remaining in the game. Oakland takes over. First and 10 from their own 23. They'll work on the clock. This is Hubbard. And this time, the Jets stop Hubbard, maybe with a yard. Joey Jackson, the big rookie from New Mexico State, the principal tackler. There's Bobby Howfield, who's become a belated hero for the New York Jets with a six field goals a week ago. It's three tonight. Well, he's had some year. He was 23 of 31 coming in, and he's kicked three tonight. And he won the game over New Orleans last week on six field goals. Okay, it's second down and eight. Draw play goes to Hubbard. And Hubbard getting close to the first down. Early Thomas made the stop. The 102 Jets. yards now, Howard, for Marv Hubbard. Yeah, he's had a big night. And he's become a truly fine, powerful, impressive running back. The Jets' only chance is to contain this Oakland team. They have to get back that football. They can't even really give up a field goal because the odds are that Namath, if they could contain Oakland, would get the Jets into field goal position again. He's had that kind of night. 18 out of 30, 275 yards, one touchdown. He leads the NFL in passing yardage by almost 600 yards more than John Hayden. And they would like to stop the Raiders at this point. Third down, less than a yard, 9.35 remaining. LaMonica switches up, Chester's wide open. Great call. Norman's defense. 69 yards. Raymond Tester as Daryl LaMonica came up with the play fake. The Jets cocked and ready for the attempt at the first down, but totally off guard. Completely. Amateurishly. Through all the years they've watched Bart Starr do this, take another look at it. Yep, he was wide open. They were expecting that run. The Raiders have been running very well. No one was in about 10 yards of Raymond Chester. He hadn't even opened it up yet. And that changes the complexion dramatically. George Blanda on. And Blanda extends the lead of the Raiders over the Jets 24 16. And we'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum in Oakland, California, right after this message. You know, nothing brings back the memories of Christmas like the great songs of Christmas. Some of the greatest are here in Goodyear's newest album, Christmas Is. 14 Christmas classics by outstanding artists of our time. Barbara Streisand. The Carpenters. Frank Sinatra. Joe Stafford. The Hillside Singers. Judy Garland. Tony Bennett. Hmm. How'd he get in there? Andy Williams. The Mills Brothers. Doris Day. Vicki Carr. Patty Page. And Julie Andrews. Christmas is just $1.25 at your Goodyear service store and most Goodyear dealers. But you want to hurry, because this is one memory that won't last forever. Daryl LaMonica has just hit Raymond Chester on a third down short yardage situation. 69 yards for a touchdown. The Raiders 24, the New York Jets 16. Jerry DePoister set to kick to Chris Ferrisopoulos and Hank Pajorklin. LaMonica now 10 of 17, 199 yards, two touchdowns, that's 17 on the year. This will be Pajorklin at the five. And the Ivy Leaguer moves out to the 24. 
19 yard return. All right, you'll see Raymond Chester come from his tight end position. A good fake by LaMonica. Has plenty of time to throw. And look how wide open he is. And this picture that you're seeing again is being produced by some of our superb cameramen as these pictures have been produced all year. Our thanks to the likes of Jack Dorfman and Don Farnham and Jim Hannigan. Let's pick up with the action. At first and 10, the ball at the 24. The Raiders have gone to a three-man rush. They know what Namath has to do, and he's going to do it right now. Up in the air it goes to Maynard. That broke it. That's Maynard the over the 45, record. and that breaks that record. Wouldn't That's you think they'd stop the, the play and give him the ball or something? This man has spent 14 years of his life and has established a record. Look at that split screen now. Right in there. Maynard moving all the way out to the 46-yard line. A jet first down, and they're not out of this football game. When you have a passer like Namath, you have receivers like Maynard, you have Caster. Well, you can recall the first game of the season. I guess it wasn't the first game, the second against Baltimore. Namath, six touchdown passes. When he's hot, he's hot. And he's had a good night, considering he cannot establish any kind of running. He's now thrown seven to Don Maynard. We told you he broke the record of Ray Berry. Now on first and ten, going to the air, and Eddie Bell complete. Eddie Bell all the way down to the 30, and well, I hope it doesn't sound like we're all Joe Namath no, it fans, doesn't. but he is incredible. That's the point I wanted to make, Frank, because we constantly face that since you and I happen to live in the New York area. The man's a great professional. He's playing without us any running game. Watch Eddie Bell here catch another turn in. He's an exciting runner when he gets that ball. He was uh, caught several touchdown passes this year. I can only second what you guys say about Namath. Donnie's 20 of 32, 324 yards. Had about four drop. And he's got seven minutes That's and 43 right. seconds, and he's not giving up. Two drop by Bell, two by Cast. Blitz. And he that. held it, oh, and it was dropped Caster. by Caster. He read the blitz. He really did, Frank. He read it a lot better than Caster. I think you saw him hesitate. It was not because he wasn't ready to throw. It was because Caster wasn't ready to catch, and he wasn't after he did. He you finally know, did throw. People ask what makes a great quarterback. We're going to run this again, show you the turn in. But Sammy Baugh once told me, and Baugh had such a great arm, watch that turn in, and he had it and dropped it. So that's three he's dropped tonight, though he's had overall a good night, and he's a good receiver. It's quickness of feet that can make a great passer, and that's true of Namath with the whole knee problem. Problem. He's so quick dropping back. 12 feet distance. Hard to blitz that man. Second down and 10 from the 30. And he gets it out this time to number 32, Emerson Boozer. This time, good for three as Phil Villapiano, one of the finer linebackers you're going to see, you're going to hear a lot of him in years to come. Moves over to make the coverage. And now the Raiders know the name of them going to put it in the air. Just he has to. It's third and seven. Filipiano. 727 remaining in the game. Yeah, Filipiano is very friendly with a member of the Jets, Bob Davis. They're opening a football camp together at Asbury Park. 41. Filipiano, there he is. It's third and seven. The ball at the 27. Maynard is right. Bell is left. Caster is a tight end on the left side. 88. Eddie Bell, and it'll be picked off by Tatum, Jack Tatum. Jack Tatum took it all the way down to the 43-yard line, fumbled the ball. I believe the referee is indicated, recovered by the Jets. One referee said the Jets had it, one had the... Uh, Raiders had it. The head referee says the Raiders still have it. I guess that's the way it goes. And now they're arguing about it. Well, we're in Oakland. <laughs> oh, he says Tatum was down and the play was stopped, and it's his judgment that should prevail. He was there. 57-yard return, and I'd have to say that ball, Don, we hope we can look at it later. I think it was underthrown. Looked to be from here, Frank. Sure did. First down and 10. Raiders now. Leading 24 to 16. Grantham makes a stop. 
And here we go. Well, I'll tell uh -oh. you. Don't do that, Phil Wise. Oh, yeah. They're falling apart now, an absence of discipline. There's no point to that, no excuse for it. And as far as the interception's concerned, Don, when you have to pass and pass and pass every play, as I pointed out earlier, the interception becomes almost inevitable, doesn't it? Yeah, it really does. You, uh, you really do have to have a running game, Howard, to be effective all the time. Here's a play. He has time to throw. Throws it. Let's see. He was well covered by both Brown and that's Tatum coming over. It was a little bit underthrown. But uh, you see Tatum make a fine run back. There's Thamuth, who learned his lesson in trying to tackle. Now watch the officials come up here. One of them says east and one of them says west. The referee that knows says, wait a minute, man. I'm calling this ball game. Personal foul ruled against the Jets on the last little hassle. The ball now first and ten for the Raiders. They're at the 25. Here comes Hubbard. And the big fullback moves to the 22. Daryl and Monica, we've talked a lot about Joe Namath, but he has called a brilliant game, that third and short yardage. Considering he was running so well against the Jets, came as a total surprise. Those stats are not bad right there, are they, Frank? Yeah, 10 out of 17, 109, and he has two touchdown passes. He's had quite a year, too. He's, his the best play. thing is the fact that he's only thrown now nine interceptions. All right, his second down and seven, six minutes, 18 seconds, clock moving, remaining in the game. A game the Jets have got to win. They trail 24 to 16. Here comes Davis. Davis is upended at the 15-yard line. Stopped there by Chris Ferrisopoulos. It all comes home to roost. We talked about Oakland being a second-half team. We talked about them being perhaps the best fourth-quarter team on the record in professional football. Look at Joe Namath. Well, it all started back in July, and it's been a long, hard grind. There's one ahead of the Jets. That would be Cleveland next Sunday. And if they could win tonight, they could win against Cleveland. They would be the wild card representative. But it's been a year of injury for the Jets. It's been a super year for the Oakland Raiders. They've won four in a row since losing to Kansas City. And Davis gets the first down. 526 remaining in the game. ABC News brings you live coverage of the final moonwalk of the Apollo missions as astronaut Cernan, Schmidt, Land and Explorer, former astronaut Alan Shepard, our first man into space, provides a commentary from Houston, and that's here on ABC. And of course, we all certainly wish them well. First down, the Raiders, they're at the 13 of the Jets. 5.04, clock moving. Hubbard down to the 10. Frank, as we approach the end of our Monday night NFL season, a reminder to our viewers that Monday night sports will continue for the next two weeks with the Liberty Bowl game next Monday night and the North-South game the Monday night after that. And, of course, New Year's Eve, the Sugar Bowl, Oklahoma against Penn State, and we kind of like that game. It should be a beauty. And this one... They're still not over. The Raiders leading 24 to 16. They have a second down now and seven. They're on the 10 yard line. This is Clarence Davis. Spinning and turning. He's down to the five yard line. Phil Wise making the move. There's Jack Tatum who picked off that name of what an athlete Pass he is. Returned at 57 yards. All-American from Ohio State. Unaccountably passed up in the draft by your old team, the Giants, in favor of Rocky Thompson. Now, that's not a dig at Rocky, but that's some kind of athlete. He certainly is. I don't think anyone would say either one wasn't. Third down and three. The ball on the sixth. Brought in two tight ends, Frank. I think that's what you could see. Maybe Coach Eubank was telling his boys. Two tight ends are in there. Davis, and he fumbles the football. football. Does he get it back? Well, if he did, he really is lucky. He did? Fell right on it. Well, those running backs from SC do that, Don. Yeah, you get a lot of those SC pops in, Frank. Be glad when SMU's number one. Well, you know, it's country. easy because they have more players playing pro football than any other school. That's true. But not per capita. 
Grambling College might be that. And here comes a classic. Frank, you talk about, talk about waiting a long time to prove a point. 14 years ago, the Chicago Bears let George Blanda go because he was too old. And, this is the, and they play the Chicago Bears next week. And he's sure looking forward to that one, 14 years later. And I'll tell you something else about him. He's played in 181 consecutive games. And 45 years old. It took an automatic delay of the game penalty there, Frank. And the only thing I can think of uh, is that they may feel it gives them a little bit better an angle in there. Can you think of anything else? Well, with the hash marks moved in, I don't think it would make much difference, but that must have just eaten up the I'm clock. Not, but I'm not kicking it. <laughs> that too. They're just eating up the clock. They say George can kick them anywhere. 316 remaining in the game. He chews a lot of gum, too. He missed it. <laughs> Well, maybe wish he had the five back. So the score remains the Raiders 24, the Jets 16, and we'll be back after this message. Now there's a great new way to keep a man's hair in shape. New Max for Men, the man's hair dryer, designed by Gillette. With 500 watts of power to dry hair fast, plus a training brush to help smooth out unruly hair, plus a shaping comb, to comb in fullness, give hair that natural look. Keep your hair in shape with Max for Men, with plenty of power to dry hair fast. New Max for Men, the man's hair dryer, designed by Gillette. Because Papermate knows how you write, they put a pump in the PowerPoint pen. So even at odd angles, on the worst surfaces, the Papermate pumps ink to the point, automatically as you write. So no matter where or what you have to write on, the Papermate PowerPoint keeps on writing smoothly, even when you wish it wouldn't. The Papermate PowerPoint, the pen that pumps the ink. Put a Papermate gift set in someone's stocking this Christmas. Some of the fans are starting to leave the Oakland Coliseum, and they must be the ones who don't know Joe Namath. There's three minutes and 12 seconds remaining. As you look at the rushing statistics, yeah, that's Hubbard, the story. Almost tripling the output. Well, almost quadrupling. He has quadrupled. Well, I can't bolt fly anyway. <laughs> He's got a whole bunch more than all the Jets put together. But there is time remaining for this man, number 12, Joe Namath. He trails by eight. And will the piano hold on? No. Rule incomplete. Poorly thrown. That was a little bit high. Namath knows that himself. I think he's a little tired. He's hit for 21 out of 36, 328 yards. He's had to do the whole thing alone. You can't play that way in the National Football League. Well, Maynard's helped him a lot. That's true. So is Caster. Caster. So is Bell. He's got good receivers, but yes. and he's had protection from the offensive line. On average, very good. Second down and 10 from the 20. Again, time to throw. A flag goes down as a Raider really unloaded on a jet. I think that was Villapiano. And they Maynard, Maynard was, the, one that was uh, the recipient of, I think, of Villapiano clothesline, if I'm not mistaken, Frank. We'll take a look at it. They did throw a flag. Let's see. Here's Maynard number 13. Let, who is that? Wham. And that is Villapiano. Just a quick shot to the jaw. Then I'm going to step on him. Well, I told you it was dangerous. That's right. Personal foul. Now, will that go on top? It will. Go on go top of the completion to Eddie Bell. That's a big gainer. This foul game, it's a long shot, but they got three minutes to go. You need a touchdown to field goal. It's Mark. a long, long shot. You know, I know what Namath has to be thinking. The, the big man that he likes to hit. Let's take a look at that again. And here is the completion. You see Maynard already lying on the ground back up field. And Nehemiah Wilson and also Nehemiah goes Wilson down. I also think shaken up. Got his shoulder and elbow there. Frank, he was the one that hit Eddie Bell. Eddie walks over and says, look, man, don't mess with me. I'm a pretty big fella. What yeah, I started to say was that Don, the big man for Joe Namath, has been Rich Caster whenever he feels he has to strike from way out. He's done it over and over this year. He has that great speed, the same speed that 
Chester has of the Raiders. And he knows he'll have to get it on the scoreboard quickly. 3.02 remaining in the game. He trails by eight. The amazing thing about Namath is the way he holds that football till the very last possible second and still gets it off so swiftly with that release. All right. Markham is in in the four in offense of the Jets at this point. Three man rush for the Raiders. Flag is down. Namath going to Castor and is picked off. But hold on, the flag is down. I think the Raiders were offside, and I think the play will be called back. Jack Tatum made the interception downfield, but a Raider had jumped offside, and it is being brought back. Well, partisan crowd here at the Oakland Coliseum, and they're justifiably proud of the Oakland Raiders who cinched their division last week. They would like to put the Jets out of it completely in that way. They would avoid meeting the undefeated Miami Dolphins. That might make the Pittsburgh Steelers a little hotter, possibly the Cleveland Browns. Frank, this is the play we've got right here. Maynard coming out this time. He's not going to take any chances with Villapiano. He's ducking in there under him. All right, it's first down and five. The ball just inside the 45. 2.55 remaining in the game. Flags go down, complete to Eddie Bell. But again, the flags in the middle of the line of scrimmage. I think this is against Winston Hill, number 75 for Holden. Appears to be in motion, uh, illegal procedure, motion. Howard. Yep. I okay. think he may have just I mean, picked his hand up or something right before the snap of the ball. It was thrown early. I pre-called it, but I was watching Winston, and he was having trouble. Listen, let's face it, fellas. They could call holding on every play of every game if they wanted. <laughs> Look at that. Down statistic. remains the same. First and ten. Ball right at the 50, and boy, that's impressive. Well, Two minutes, 49 seconds. Bell out to the left. Barkham comes out to the right. The tight end is Caster. Maynard, the top of your screen, is in the slot. Lone back, Harkey. Hamath firing, and this time almost picked off. Gerald Irons, number 86, and almost picked it off, and Namath is shaken up. Namath is hurt. Watch the ball. It appeared it was almost intercepted. Irons back around. It did go right through the hands of number 86 for the Oakland Raiders, and that would be Gerald Irons. Namath appears to be, he just no, he's gestured, to, he gestured to, to the bench there. and said that I want out. And, well, Bob Davis came on the field. Trying to walk it off. You can see his left knee, the sock down his left knee, that's where he has that really big knee brace. We'll take another shot of it. I think we can't see him take a pretty good lick just after he throws it. Throws the ball. Ooh, yeah. Right on his knee. Number 80, that was Toms. Art Toms, and he crumbles under. That's not an intentional move by Toms. That's one of the main ways that quarterbacks get their knees or ankles hurt. Guys are being blocked, and the momentum of the block just throws them right in there. The quarterback is planted his feet to throw and trying to push off of it. So he has them kind of set. Then you roll into them, and the knees and ankles can pop pretty good. He's 22 of 38, 343 yards, and they'll take no chances. Bob Davis comes in. And this crowd is going to applaud Joe Namath. Quite a sporting gesture on the fans yeah. of part of the Oakland Raiders. The fans. They're giving him a standing ovation. Hey, that's something, isn't it? It is. He rates. Okay, Bob Davis hasn't played much this year. Eight attempts, five completions. He was 40% last year filling in for Namath. He has a job cut out, and this time he goes down. He was trying to go deep, did not have time. Racing in there was Otis Sistrunk, number 60. A lot has been said about the psychological advantage of having a Joe Namath. And I'm not really causing this criticism on anyone, but 
there's got to be a letdown. These guys know that, uh, man, that you know they're really in trouble. You can see going back here, Davis is getting set to throw. I believe it's Tom's again. Sistrunk, I'm pretty that's number 60 instead of 80. But it's just hard for the offensive line to stay up. They work really hard for Namath. They know how precarious his knees are and how much they need to protect him. You can see Joe on the sideline trying to get himself warmed up to see if he could possibly go back in. Davis now with a third and ten, a six-year veteran out of Virginia. And he is going to get the wide out. Oakland pass rush. They know he has to go to the air. And in and out of the hands. Incomplete. Little Bobby Bell, or rather Eddie Bell, could not hold on. And Davis upset. Clock showing 234. Look who's coming back. And Joe Namath is coming back in. And I very dejected Bob Davis walks off but on fourth down Namath comes in he has 234 and if he does not get the first down he'll turn it over to the Oakland Raiders Markham goes out to the left Castor out to the left Bell and Maynard the other two receivers in the four receiver offense out to the right from midfield fourth and ten this could be the ball game. to the 36 yard line is complete to I believe Barkham Jerome Barkham from the end zone shot you see David kind of bounce out of that pocket a little bit Barkham is covered very well in there by number 26 Alonzo Thomas we take him isolated here gets a good shove right in the line of scrimmage comes back in and Joe Namath uses a timeout. Or rather, now we have the two minute warning. We'll be back at the Oakland Coliseum right after this. I'm Eric Parsegian, football coach at Notre Dame. If a quarterback could take only one play into the game, it should be an option play. He can run, he can pitch out, or pass. Three options. Ford gives you its own version of the triple option play on the mid-size 1973 Ford Torino Squire. The three-way door gate. It opens like a door, fast, even with the window up. It opens with the window down. And it opens like a tailgate. Or big loads like four-foot-wide building panels. Three options. And you find the three-way door gate on the world's best-selling full-size wagon, the quiet new 1973 Ford Country Squire along with Ford Motor Company exclusives like dual-facing rear seats. See the new 1973 wagons at your Ford dealers. When it comes to wagons, nobody swings like Ford. John Amoth went out of the ball game. He came back in on fourth and 10, completed a pass for a first down to Jerome Barkham. The ball is at the 36-yard line. There are two minutes left in the game. The Jets trail the Oakland Raiders 24 to 16 in a game that they have to win. And Daryl Monica, who has played a superb game himself, is on the sidelines congratulating Marv Hubbard, who cracked the thousand yard mark tonight rushing. And they're loose, and they should be. They've won the Western Division of the American Football Conference, but they have not won this football game yet. And of course, if they win this, they will not face the undefeated Miami Dolphins. Markham, Bell, Caster. Amos back trying. He's going to go down. Down he goes at the 48-yard line. A lot of pressure in there. Horace Jones, the only man in the defensive unit of the Oakland Raiders who does not have a pass interception, and that's remarkable. I think the Oakland Raiders deserve all kinds of credit for their performance tonight. They could have wilted. They had things clinched. As far as the Dolphins are concerned, <laughs> A, if Oakland has to play Pittsburgh or Cleveland, they got a big game ahead of themselves. And B, sooner or later, they're going to have to play those Dolphins if they're going to go anywhere. They could have taken it easy tonight. They didn't. They played with pride, and they played with character, and they showed they're a team of character. This means Coach Nick Scorch's Cleveland Browns are going to be in there. Is that right? Yep. 
They've done a good job this year. They sure have, and they deserve congratulations. Second down and 31. And I think we may have used too much time. All right. That's the call. And Namath is unhappy. Second down now, 36. One twenty-one remains in the season for the New York Jets. They do have the Cleveland Browns next week, but tonight they've been battling for the wild card in the AFC, and they battled well. The wild card turned out to be a deuce. Or end. Offense. Raiders. The four linebackers in. Namath fires out to Eddie Bell. And he can't hold on to it at the 50. Has not been one of Eddie's better nights. And another flag goes down. Things really deteriorating now. Minute 15 left. Eddie Bell shaken up. Minute 15 left of our season, fellas, and a lot of, a lot of people. Let's watch Eddie on this play as we Bank runs out to see what his condition is. Willie Brown is yep. the tackler, and Willie is some one-on-one -on -one tackler. So is, so is Tatum. Reiterating that this is a talented football team, this rated team. Howard, you're talking about this year that a lot of folks would even think made this thing a lot of fun for us. That's correct. People like our producer Chet Forty, our producer Dennis Lewin, people like our director Joe Assetti. Right on down the line, more cameramen to be named, like Joe Sapienza, Joe Schabo, and Bob Wolf, and Warren Press, and Joe Nisi, Billy Morris. Jesse Cohn, Norm Olson, Billy Morris. John Broderick. Roy Robbins. Yeah, got old Roy Roberts in there. Our great engineering supervisor. And our publicity people, like Irv Brodsky and David Dyer. They've all lent a hand in this, the third consecutive year of Monday Night Football on ABC. Our West Coast engineering supervisor, Lynn Bottom, is another who deserves the credit. We realize we've, re in the final minute of a football game now, or a little more than a minute, but these men are entitled to the notice we're giving them. They do the job. Individual commitment to group effort was the way Mr. Lombardi put it. That's what these men do. Right now, it's third down and 31, and Eddie Bell leaves the game. Six receptions, 89 yards. Joe Namath went out of the game, shaken up, and now he comes with the screen, and is almost picked off by Tony Klein. We missed uh, Terry O'Neill, and they were playing the Notre Dame fight song a moment ago, our statistician. Well, it's a long way from January 12, 1969, for Joe Willie Namath. At a tender age, he proved that he could win it all. I wonder if he'll ever get that chance again. Well, he's down to his last pop with a minute and nine remaining in the game. He has a fourth down and 31, and that's when you like to have those coaches sending those plays in, Don. It's about the only time I can think of I'd like to have them sending them in, though. That's right. They usually go to the water bucket on that one, don't they? Yeah. Uh, they have a way of looking at the, the other way or at the clock or something. Fourth and 31. The ball just short of the 45 of the Jets. Good protection. Joe throws it as far as he can to Markham. And he caught the football. Deflected, I believe. Yep. That has to be one of the unbelievable oh. catches. And look at Joe. Hold on. He says, we still have a chance. Jerome Markham. 46 yards. He needed 31. And, well, I don't know. Tony Klein, I... Probably has to admire him too as he walks alongside of Joe Namath. Oh, Here's a look again. 
Frankie throws it up. I believe that was Tatum that came over him at 31. It just bounced out of their hands, and Markham caught it and kept going. Look at it from the other angle. We'll see if we can pick it up a little bit better for you. You take a look. Again, we told you in 1968, look at that catch. The Jets were leading look by at four catch. points, Don, and Oakland in 65 seconds came back to score two touchdowns and win it. We still have 58 seconds remaining. What Joe needs to do is get a quick touchdown. He has to put the ball in the air almost because he needs it right now. And then the onside kick. Firing. Oh, and in and out of the hands. Could not hold on to it. The ball's pierced me a little bit high, but it could be catchable. Let's take a look at it. It slipped down, in and out. Oh, that's a catchable movement. And on the other side, we'll show you a split screen. It appears that Don Maynard was held up pretty good there. He's trying to move to the inside. Somebody got a hold of his jersey. Still working on him. Nehemiah. 54 seconds left in the ball game. Namath 24 of 43. 402 yards gained pass. Second down. Four end offense. Maynard Bell right, Caster, Markham, the big man to the left. Well, and and Markham there. caught the ball. He will not get it over the line, but there is a flag down. There will probably be some kind of interference call, whether it's offensive or defensive. We'll wait and see. Stop the clock anyway, Frank. Against... But Oakland was unable to capitalize, and New York received another chance. If Tatum took exception to his treatment at the hands of Rich Castor, pity the referee who nullified the play with a flag as fate began to smile on the Jets. Jerome Barkham, number 83, held the hands into which destiny delivered Namath desperate heave, and New York again was lying on Oakland's front step. But how viciously does fortune turn, and given a break, the Oakland defense took matters into its own hands. Number 36, Steve Harkey, survived to the one-yard line for Oakland's number 48, Nehemiah Wilson, even the score with Broadway Joe. After 403 yards passing but only one touchdown, Joe Willie was down and the Jets were counted out. As for the playoff-bound Raiders, their good fortune would run dry in Pittsburgh two weeks hence, when Frank O'Harris would immaculately receive a deflected pass and run the Raiders right out of the 1972 season.